I can do the recap. It's a Steve oh, issue. Boy. Okay. Uh, yeah, Ben, take it away. My my notes have changed. So on the twenty fifth of Yardrung, we left with Ingvar and Eaglef, whatever his name is, on our four stage expedition in which thunderstorms happened again. We found shelter by Manfred miraculously finding a cave full of mosquitoes and other blood-sucking insects in which only a Burard suffered any problems whatsoever. We found a shiny golden monolith of lightning uh, buzzing, reminding Burard of giant insects, and we avoided it instead of being fried to cinders. We found Swamp Town, the uh, happy-go-lucky place, full of smell, foul-smelling thickness, and we met Draven the Innkeep, who spoke Estalian and confused us much. Uh, we interacted with Not the Resident Evil Merchant, uh, who sold us some lovely smelling liquid poultice bug, thing. Bug, bug lotion. Yeah, medieval bug repellent, which we promptly used to sleep at an inn. And then we got went back for more before we left. Uh, there was still more rain. Uh, we got some food this time. Uh, we found the ruins of El Cadavo. And everyone was not pleased by the creepy mist and the desire to leave. Eventually we got to Port Reaver, where we met the highlight of the session, Lusty Jim. Hell and Manfred yeah. swindled the entire uh, establishment out of 21 shillings and then managed to not get robbed on his way out as he made a deal with Lusty Jim. Yeah, we found out some stuff about Port Reaver and that the Swamp Town herb man used to live in Port Reaver and was asked to stay but left anyway. And that is a brief overview. Very good. Uh, and last but not least, our resident skink got yanked from the floor by by an emerging croxigore that was laying inside a very large sized puddle. And now for your next exciting episode of Lustriable. And now uh, we get on data, actually. Um, so, Hetakai, you are yanked from the ground uh, hmm. from the by this like muscular, scaly uh, arm, and you hear this bellow start, but you s very quickly you see movement from the inside of the cave, and you see a small figure going now. No! And uh, going in the direction uh, of you and the uh, the Karksagor. Uh Would you like to do something? Uh, yes, I would like to try and squirm out of this thing's grip. Uh, make a... You, do you have melee brawling? No. <laughs> uh, give me an athletics test then. Okay, uh, challenging? It is going to be challenging. Give me a melee squirming. <laughs> I rolled a two. Oh. Uh, you, uh, you put both of your feet on the chest and you fully zoop, kind of like as if something wet coming out of a, a, a small tunnel, you just zoop out of the, the arm of the Croxagore, who immediately, like, crouches down to lunge at you but you see very quickly a number of skinks leaving the mine uh the mine shaft and one of them wields like a very large a, a very long staff that has some bells on the on the edge of it he starts shaking the bone kind of like shakes in front of the croxigar and the croxigar immediately stops uh yeah to hetakai <laughs> well will kind of, like, get his heart to stop slowing and, like, relax and say, Not enemy! 
uh, and the you see that the skink uh, kind of takes a step back and says, "We know, we know." Uh, and he touches the croxigore on the back, kind of like as as if like just passing the, his hand by the scales. And you see, as he passes a lot of the scales that were kind of like almost like a cat, that the scales go a little upwards, they start going down as the Croxagor goes closer to the ground and starts submerging again. Much chuck in this one. Uh, Teatakai will sort of bob his head and then uh, will say, um, uh, so they're, they're coming out of a mine shaft. Yeah, it is almost like an abandoned mine that the it seems to be human built that was abandoned. A lot of the shafts and the, the some stones fell, and it seems that these kings were taking uh, refuge there. Yeah, uh, there's about a dozen of them. All right, uh, I, I'm assuming Tehetekai does not recognize them. Uh, you can roll me secret signs. Uh, which is gonna be basically, I am using secret signs as if it were like lore lizardman kind of deal. Uh, what? Average. Is wait, what you say? Average. Yeah. Average. I'll look for anything they might have on them. To tell me who they are. I got four successes. Cool. Uh. As you, as you kind of look them over, uh, most of them have a are kind of like pale with uh, a, a very close to white with some tinges of green and blue. They're not like full white, uh, but they are very clear skin. Uh, and the one that is talking to you, that's kind of like heading the group, has a bunch of feathers, very large feathers on around the head and around the torso that each of them has a little bell on the end of it. A little golden bell. And he has a staff with him. As I said, it was a very long staff that has a little symbol uh, that looks to be... that identifies him as being from Hexuato. Alright. Tetakai will... um... Uh, we'll ask, why here? He, uh, kind of like, uh, as the, the, the skinks start also kind of, kind of calming down, some of them start going back to the tunnel, but skink, uh, you identify he's a skink priest. And he looks to you and says, There is... Warm blood with something we need. We come to get them. To sun, warm bloods around. Wait for night. Warm blood in human city. He uh, he nods and he points to Port River. Just came from there. What warm blood? He picks up a uh, piece of almost like uh, close to a parchment and he opens it uh, from like a little bag and he opens it and there is a um, a birth a little a little uh, kind of like drawing of the coast of Lustria. You kind of identify as a part of the coast of Lustria. And uh, he shows it to you and says, One blood has mark on skin. We think it, he has secret. He wish to remove secret from one blood. Uh... 
Tactica will nod. So are they saying the map that that image of the map itself is the mark? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tactica will nod and say, uh, "Not know this warm blood." We'll keep out eye. Uh, you see, he moves a little more to the side, closer to the to the mine shaft, and he points towards you and says, "We no need assistance. I would advise to stay away from street. Not going I... with." And he narrows his eyes. Have yes. own path. And but you see his scales kind of like brighten as you say that. Uh, uh Tatakai will uh point on the map to uh to Skeggy and say Tatakai here find warm bloods taken by fallen warm bloods he looks to be a little curious he kind of like twists his head but then he uh shakes it and says sectla <laughs> And he grabs the staff. And as he's going back, you see he says, Good travel. Stay not in city during night. And he points to the Croxagore. Much chuck. Can't stop if. And he kind of stops for a second and says, can't stop from Ka and leaves. Uh all right. Uh Tatakai um the only other thing he'll say uh to one of the, so he'll he'll just address the next skink that he sort of looks at and say Going back, Hexwalu Uh uh the one of the other skinks. It seems to be like a a, a more almost like a fighter. He has a couple of javelins on his back. He uh, nods and says, "Once we got warm blood, we will back. We'll go back." Tell priest Tetakai, return. Plan in motion. And you see they kind of look at each other. Make a charm roll for me. Oh boy, I'm good at this. Uh, what's the modifier? Say average. They are of your kin. Oh, there's the 70. Took a while. Uh, you see that they kind of like brisk and do almost like a hissing sound and they kind of like they kind of like bristle and says only old one orders us around we got plans and they skither away from the to the inside of the other mine uh Tentakai will hiss an annoyance uh but they're here to do what they're here to do. He's here to do what he's here to do. Um, he's going to uh, quirk his head at the Croxagore to ensure that it's kind of properly mollified. And then uh, he's going to make his way back out into the jungle. The... Uh... You see the Croxagore, you can barely see him now as he has, like, submerged under the water. There's very little of him here, 
but you sometimes you see some bubbles coming up and it seems to be calm regarding your uh, uh regarding our presence all right and with this information i've had a change of plan i'm going to make my way for port reaver itself uh, do you wish to disguise yourself or hide in any way, or are you? Uh, my goal walking? is to stay hidden until I arrive at the edge of Port Reaver, and then once I arrive at the edge of Port Reaver, I kind of want to see what the situation is before deciding what to do from there. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, as you're heading there, no test necessary because our warrior is wild. Uh, but as you're getting in, you're getting to Port Weaver, we jump back to our uh, crew. The from what I remember, uh, Egon and Ashley had left Lusty Gems. Yeah, we were gonna go try find the rest of every, uh, the rest of our group so that they can they can be informed of uh, our sleeping arrangements. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll say for I'll say for the sake of time and you know time RPG wibbly wobbly, um, you are able to meet on the edge of town. Uh, the four of you, there's a little alley, and all of you are able to meet without being looked by, without being seen by the other uh, the other members of Port Weaver. It is a criminal city, so there's a bunch of little alleys where people either do business or murder. So there's a bunch of them. Who says murder isn't their business? Uh -huh. uh, don't go down this alley. That's murder alley. You want to go down carjack alley. Uh. Oh, we were just going to sleep tonight and then keep moving tomorrow. Oh, there you are, Tatakai. I was wondering where you were. Find I anything interesting? Oh, I thought you didn't like towns. Oh, you have a friend. They have a map on them. Okay. Like a tattoo? Like a tattoo? Nope. Um, I think Egon actually does. He's got a, an Imperial cross on his back. No, it's on his shoulder blade. Ah, hands off, Twin Tail. Uh, you okay. see, uh, you see Ingvar actually, uh, as you say, Mark and Skane. He says, "Oh, like this," and he, like. Uh, unbuttons his shirt, and on his back there's like this gigantic skull uh, on his back. 
very crudely drawn. That's a weird tattoo, ain't it? Find a slut. Oh, it just came from Lusty Jim's. There's a lot of sluts there. Yes, you can find them there. Right over there. And she'll point out to Lusty Jim's. Well, he can't. I uh, doubt they'll, I doubt they'll let a, anyone like Sorry, that. I'm sorry to bother chat is saying that they can hear you, Sotek. Whoops. Fixed it. Sorry for the interruption. No, no, you're all good. Whoops. But yeah, just go down the road and it's right there. You could find some slots there. Uh, <laughs> Dantakai, uh, will, uh, shake his head and say, Important! Fine! Oh, is this one of this great plan thingy you got going? No! He's thief! Oh, he stole something from you. Map on skin! Took something! Must return! Wait, return the skin? Uh... He... This guy is actually not entirely sure what he stole. Uh, so he'll simply say, um, has secret. Took oh, secret. All right. Well, uh, we'll keep an eye out for it for sure. But uh, there's a lot of people in Port Reaper. This could take a while. If not find leave tomorrow but if find could help hmm. do you have his scent are you like a tracking dog what dog hmm. you see, lizard. You know, ingvar and Ergolf well, they stop and like they're not used to the conversations with lizardmen so they both look very confused <laughs> what I is mean, dog indeed? I I mean we bet we barely understand him, so like we're <laughs> not that much better. <laughs> like uh, we at least four attempt, legs, we a at tail, attempted. fur, a <laughs> muzzle, and it is a hierarchical creature. Tetakai listens to that description, looks at himself, looks back to Ashling, and says, "No." Oh, okay. Alright. So Tetakai return jungle. If find tell. Well, we will, little buddy, and she'll pat you on the head. Which part of the jungle? North And he'll point. I wanna check if he's actually pointing north. It's along the shoreline. <laughs> I only have two options. <laughs> uh, roll a navigation check. Uh, what's, the, rule, yeah. what's the difficulty? Uh, no, Ashley, because she was the one asking if you were pointing oh, okay, north. Okay. Yeah, he's he's correctly pointing north. I like slightly tilt him just a little bit so he's pointing more north. <laughs> Tantakai. Oh snap! I have. I have orientation. Are they right? Uh. Ooh, that's actually a little confusing. Well, it because... says here I automatically know which direction is north. Yeah, but you are under the effect of thought fog. I mean. Which yeah? is why I said it was confusing. Because it is, a, it is um... a little mixture of. Uh. It, it, it is a, a weird uh, two effects happening at the same time, you know? I guess I don't know. Yeah, I didn't. I guess, I'm, yeah. guess I'm unsure. Well, I'm sure that's disconcerting. It is. Oh, this is fine. 
We're fine. We got this. Uh, Tatakai is going to kind of bubble his head up and down and say, Leave now! And he just starts... Oh, okay, He bye. just leaves. Be careful in there. You oh, can And he'll, he'll point at Ashling's oh. lizard in particular and say, Can! He will not elaborate further. He will leave. No, this is Tungy. I think he likes you, Tungy. Pets Tungy. Uh, <clears throat> the lizard hisses. Yeah. Don't you say that was poisonous or venomous? Why not both? I mean, it hasn't bit me, and I don't intend to lick it. Uh, honestly, it's Lustria. Probably both. All right. You know, one of these days, that that lizard is going to ask us to eat bug, and that's my red line. No, I doubt Tungy can talk. Oh, I meant Twin Tail. Oh! <laughs> Sorry. Alright, let's go... What do you say? Find a map? What is this? A treasure hunt? Apparently uh, we're finding a map on the back of a person. Well, on a person. Doesn't have to be on their back. It would be a stupid place to put a map on your back where you can't look at it. Yeah, but everyone else could see it. Maybe you're just the map holder. would make it much easier to well keep you as a important part of uh you know what i don't even know where i'm going with this let's get back to town i miss the shade right then all right so we start like slowly walking back into the center of town and while we're walking uh egon uh, walks next to Ashling and very well attempting to look nonchalant about it uh, asks her so Ashling there's something that's been bugging me and no yeah. it's not the lizard is, do you have an infection or a wound or is there something I can care for you uh, sure no, no. I, in fact, I'm, I'm fine. Actually, I'm kind of shocked that, uh, that all the mosquitoes went for Berard. Giggle slightly. You're welcome. <laughs> no, uh, it actually, it actually has to do with you. Uh, why are you so cavalier about the gestures around everything about? all this it, for all for all this place feels like the most dangerous place on the planet we may as well be in the mootland the way you're walking around the most dangerous place on the planet my friend that is beside a hospital bed that is the most dangerous place watching people kick and scream and beg for you to save them. And you just giving them the promise that you will, knowing full well that you can't. And you're just waiting for them to slip into death and hoping to make it peaceful. That, that is the most dangerous place. This place, this is nothing compared to that. I have seen Dozens, if not hundreds by now, of people injured, battles won, lost, it, it matters not. The injured are all the same. They all beg for help. And I'm just supposed to sit there and help them. Cure their body, their soul, listen to their plights. Knowing full well that one day I will be doing the same. So I... Don't fear it. I know it will happen. And I... 
don't need to worry about it. I am here under the protection of my god, Shalya. And if I am to die, well, then I die. There's no reason to worry about it. Well, there goes my bad mood. Oh, sorry, that got a little deep. Um, so what the happened reason... in that uh, place of ill repute? I will look at Victor and Ashling, or at uh, Manfred and Ashling. What you're all uh, morose, or whatever the fancy word this... is. Like e uh, Egon a slash Manfred looks just uh, looks with like wide eyes over in Barar's direction, like slowly shaking his head. I don't know where this came from. Uh, it, it's sorry. Um, what I meant to say was, I don't worry about these things because I know that you'll protect me. I. I, I guess, but uh, that's a lot to take on faith, uh, pardon the pun. Faith is all I have. All right. Uh, e Egon has a very, like, he he's got a, a slight knot in his stomach at this point. He was, he was not uh, ready to feel existential at this point. <laughs> And, uh, well, Manfred, looks like we need to get you some bright, shiny armor. Oh, I, look, I, if we can afford armor in this place, I'll take anything. He, he, uh, he actually starts uh, re-evaluating uh, uh, where, uh, well, actually, yeah, he does start looking around if there is... Uh, in fact, any sort of uh, market plots where one could go and uh, peruse uh, expedition supplies, be it armor or whatever. Uh, give me a perception check. Right. Uh, uh, either a perception or gossip. Gossip could count as if you're like asking around for a good place. Ah, oh, that's fair. Let me see. Uh, uh, the only I'll... thing that happens. Are you having this conversation outside of your shot from uh, your two other companions? Um, honestly, probably, nope. Egof probably not. Ingvar, yeah. Uh, Egof, uh, I didn't really give a good description of him. He is a burly man, uh, bald head, thick beard, and like he is massive, but he is also very squared. Uh, oh, not a very tall guy, so he's just like this hunk of a person. He clasps you on the shoulder, and he whispers in you, because he's a very quiet guy, he kind of whispers in your ear, Sounds like very loaded relationship. And he just kind of taps you on the on the shoulder and keeps, yeah, you... gets away and keeps walking. Yeah, you sure said it. All right. He uh, after that little uh, pep talk, uh, he uh, Egon starts asking around uh, the various Manfred. Where is hmm? You will protect me, right? Well, yeah, that's kind of the point, isn't it? If you stay alive, then you can keep us alive. I think. Yes. Thank you. I guess. All right. Uh, All right. Right. So, uh, Egon starts uh, starts asking anyone with a pulse. Hell, he'll ask anyone without a pulse. They might answer. Um. Actually, that is a funny thing you mentioned. You're oh. asking around, and uh, you arrive at the like a lot of people point you towards the docks, and you arrive. Uh, the docks here are very extensive; they run for the same length as the 
uh, as the, the the settlement itself. And as people are kind of like giving you some information, you arrive and you see that the the environments that you know as kind of like a market plaza is here, the docks. Uh, basically, people unload their goods and sell them here uh, instead of carrying them inside. So people come to sell and buy in the docks. There's a couple of small sheds that work as like war warehouses. Uh, I wouldn't call them warehouses because they're too small. They usually have the size of like a two shell, two shed. Um, and you see a couple of people talking and announcing their prices. There's a bunch of people talking in Italian. Uh, there's a bunch of people talking in Tilian. Um, you hear some very loaded um, Reichspiel that seems to have a very thick accent uh, that I don't think Egon could really track uh, from, like, from where they are. You just hear this like very thick Reichspiel. And you hear, uh, you see this group of people leaving one of the boats, uh, one of the, a smaller boat, um, very thick, uh, kind of like very thick cloaks over their heads, uh, around five of them. And you see as they go and they like ignore every single trader and go straight inside one of the two sheds. And after a while, as you're like buying and selling, they start leaving with boxes. Uh, which kind of like is odd. And the uh, you, you hear one of the merchants that is like close to you as he kind of like spits on the on the ground. He says like, I can't believe they keep doing trade with those monsters. And one of the what? other merchants, and one of the other merchants is like, well, they pay well. So what can I do? And uh, what monsters that might those be, perchance? The, uh, they kind of look to each other and they have this look that you're getting used to as of the that is like oh you're new here right and they say it's one of the one of the weird pirates that exists from here he acts down south sometimes he comes here to do trade calls himself commodore or king of lustria kind of pitiful if you ask me has a lot of money. A lot of ships, too. You don't say. Now, they look alive. You don't really see them. Uh, they have these, like, very, very thick cloaks over their head that are very, like, low cloaks. Uh, so you don't really see them very well. You could walk up to them. And that would probably give you a better view, but from a distance, which is kind of like what you get, uh, you don't really see them very well. You know what? Nothing get ventured, nothing gained. I'm gonna see what they uh, I'm gonna see what they have to sell or buy. Depend. Manfred, you think they're from that boat of the Arch Grand Commodore we ran into? I wouldn't be surprised, but. I'm, I'm going to go find out. Uh, but he's going to flick his eyes to Ashling as he brings it up. Hmm. Who thinks they're still looking? Mm, they might be. Depends how damaged their ship is. I don't think those guys are looking for us. They seem to be doing business here. And from the sounds of it, they've been doing business for a while. This might just be a normal trade run, which, who knows, I might be able to get a cutoff. One moment, please. Sort of gestures for them to hang back. Yeah, and approaches using... those bloat figures. Uh, using the same role, as almost like a perception check, as this is not a very difficult thing to do, as you get close, 
Uh, you notice that they are very pale and very, uh, like, it's like six humanoids. It seems to be human. Seem to be very pale and very much, uh, seem to be very thin. Uh, almost gaunt in appearance. They have very, uh, their, their cheekbones are almost like you can see the bone of the skull. And they seem to be very weak as they are carrying some large boxes that don't seem to be very that heavy, but they are having a difficult time carrying them. All right. I'm going to find the, uh, well, is, who's got the biggest hat? That's usually the best indicator. You actually don't see any of them having hats or anything like that. It's just the five of them that they they climbed out of a rowboat. They grabbed a bunch of uh, a bunch of boxes, are carrying them to the rowboat, and kind of that's it. You'd see no one else with a garment that looks like that. Hmm. Does anyone is any of them? sort of directing the others to carry boxes. No. no really. You do see a guy on the back that is like uh, reclined on the door of the tool shed. He has a, almost like a cigarette on him and uh, like a, yeah, you know, paper, a paper cigarette. And he's kind of like watching them work. But you didn't see them come in with this guy. Mm. He seems to be just does, supervising, but he's not responsible for he, them. That's kind of the vibe does, again. Does he look similar in appearance to the other ones? No, not at all. He seems to be one of the locals. He has a kind of like a, a, a white blouse with some very long uh, black pants and a scimitar and a pistol uh, on his waist. Really dashing. But yes, uh, yep. I'm actually going to approach him because he seems to be a intermediary of sorts. Let's see. Uh, let's see if we can pump the middlemen for some uh, for some info here. Mm -hmm. All right. I approach the tobacco smoker. What do you say? Um, can I time it so that the uh, range? All, uh, the strange cloaked figures are uh, out of earshot when I approach. Yeah, sure, sure, no problem. All right, uh, I approach him and say, uh, "Actually, I sort of pat my pouch and uh, uh, and my sling bag and say, ah, damn it, just ran out of tobacco. Hey, buddy, uh, can a man uh, bother you for a smoke?" He kind of like looks you up and down uh, and kind of like shakes his shoulders, grabs a little pouch, and he has these like rolled, uh, kind of like a rolled cigarettes with tobacco on them. Um, and he kind of like gives it to you and uh, he says, All right, I don't have any loose, but you can have this if you want to. Oh. Sure, thanks, friend. Uh, it's not good, but, you know. And uh, with that, for effect, uh, Egon is going to, uh, just, to uh, just to look cool, <laughs> he is going to spend one of his matches to light the, uh, mm -hmm. light the tobacco. So, down to five. Ah, getting, getting close to none. All right, so... Match, uh, put a uh, sort of whiff, uh, uh, extinct, and tossed into the into the sea if it's close enough. Mm -hmm. And uh, after a small puff on it, he uh, blows it out. and says, "So, uh, what's the deal with the?" Uh, just uh, sort of nods his head over towards the uh, creepy-looking guys. Uh, he, he kind of like nods and says, oh, they came to pick up a, uh, delivery they had. Oh. Anything valuable? 
he looks towards you and he kind of frowns and then he just shakes his shoulders. Don't know. Didn't look. Boss just said to be here, open the shed, some guys would come, would take the boxes and then close up the shed again. Hmm. Sounds boring. Extremely. Well, Manfred Frank holds out a hand that isn't holding a cigarette. Broker of sort. He uh, kind of like pats his hand a little, a little dirty with with some dust, um, and he says, uh, "Frederick." Hmm. Imperial. Uh, my mother was. Ah, I see. I'm uh, I'm from up north. Up north, and he kind of like puffs on the cigarette as he looks. Ostland? Uh, no, Nordland actually. Uh, came right from Salzenmund to the New World. Gotta say, sort of taking a liking to this place. He sh again shakes his shoulder and says, "You get used to it after all." Let's see, let's see. Well, if that's the uh, well, it was a uh, nice to meet you, Frederick. But uh, uh, I think uh, uh, finishes the cigarette, stomps on it, and says, "I think I'm gonna get going." Uh, Got some friends to meet up at Lusty Gyms. He looks back towards the uh, towards the shed, and you see that the guys have stopped coming, and they they are kind of like r getting inside the rowboat, and he shakes his shoulders, kind of like finishes the cigarette, and says, oh, "Pleasure." Uh, right. if you're interested, so you said you enjoy some trading, they might have forgotten a box. Oh? Want to buy some? Well, I mean, depends what you're selling. The risk is of the buyer. I have no idea what it is in the box. But so figured they wouldn't box, count. Then? Almost like that, yeah. Ooh, that, uh, uh, loot boxes. Ooh, yeah. What's can't in the box? Can't escape, can't escape it. Tell you what. Uh, let me see this box. I'll make up my mind then. He nods and he, like, as he enters... Um, he kind of like closes the, the two shed. Uh, there's a little lantern on the inside that's kind of like hooked to the ceiling. And he brings you to a part. And it is very clear that they didn't forget. He hid it. Uh, as he mm. starts patting uh, a very large uh, stack of like hay. And he like pats it away and reveals this like large dark wooden box. How large we talking here? Um, is this a, meter... a person-shaped box? It is not a, a person-shaped box. It is like a <laughs> meter, uh, a meter by a meter. So like a, a square meter box. A, a square meter box. Hmm. It's a halfling. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um. Hmm. Yeah. I uh, sort of uh, like casually knock on it. Does it sound full? Sounds full. Hmm. How much do you want for this box? He looks at it. I'm not thinking about it. I'll give it to you for a crown. Ooh, whole crown. That's uh, it's a little rich for my blood. Uh, how about how about fifty shillings? Uh, 
make a haggle test. Crap, I don't actually have 15 shillings. I need to beat this guy badly. Alright, let's see. Uh, uh, you're muted, babe. Oh, I rolled a geez. plus seven. <laughs> no, never mind. <laughs> oh, oh sad. Alright, come on, crit. Nope! You did? You, know what? you did get a crit! <laughs> I I got what I asked for. You know what? Let's... It's time for the first fortune point of the day. Not even a success. Alright. Well, that was, a, that was a poor deal, but hey, I tried. Does this guy look injured? I don't like have sustained injuries or is dealing with like a bum leg or something like that. Frederick? Yeah. Uh, no, he seems to be very uh, well, as healthy as a guy that lives in the in these kind of places. It look looks he's kind of thin. Uh, but he is. Uh, but he's not. He it doesn't seem to be injured in any way. Okay. Never mind, my other idea was to just, I'll heal you in exchange. I have uh, one last attempt. So does he uh, does he say no to the uh, he, to my uh, counteroffer? He kind of shakes his head and is like, I don't think so. This is a very... If my boss figures out that I'm doing this, I'm going to need money to run. And it is at least a good crown to get out of this place. All right. Tell you what. Final offer. Egon pulls out his deck of cards and says, "I'll put up, fi- uh, I'll put up all of my money, which I'll lie to him and say fifteen shil- uh, fifteen shilling, and you put up that box. Winner take. Give me a charm roll. Now he- this man is a criminal, right?" He is very clearly a criminal. Does my etiquette criminals uh, help me at all in this? I think you're... Mm. Yeah, yeah, actually, I, I, I would say it counts. So average, then? I'm going to say the average, yeah. It was going to be challenging, but I'll say average because of the... Because of... Because you do recognize him as... Come on. You know what? Screw it. You, you recognize him... Yeah. You recognize him as a gambler. Oh, as like, right. There is no way this guy leaves as a criminal here. And he does. he's not like a hardcore gambler. So this is a very tempting offer. All right. Marginal success, but a success nonetheless. He... He looks towards you and kind of looks to the to the box. And looks back. Let's see. I'll do it like this. Uh, the. Money seems fine, but that means that I don't think my profits are very high with this. So instead of those chainlings, what about that nice looking machete you have right there? Oh, this thing? Mm. Same, same deal, but you throw that instead of the coin. When it takes all. You know what? Holds out hand. Deal. And he, uh, he shakes your hand. He grabs the box, puts it in the kind of like the center of the, 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 this place, and he grabs these like foldable stools and he gives you one, picks one for, one for himself. Alright, Egon pulls, uh, starts shuffling the deck of cards that he has. So, shall we shake on it? You know, for manner's sake.
Sure. All right. It's on hand. Shakes Frederick's hand, and the the deal, uh, the bargain is struck. Ashling is watching this very close, wondering why these two men are just not paying each other. Are you watching through like a like a crack in the tool shed? Yep. Ah, fair. There's this par- pair of eyes in the middle of the wall. <laughs> Honestly, probably a normal, normal activity in Swamp Town. To be fair. Yeah. All right, so Egon starts dealing out cards, and he looks to see his uh, see his hand, and let's see them opposed gamble gamble to. Hey, Bernard, Bernard. Come here. Why, why are you staring at a wall? No, look at this. Come here. Do let's do challenging. Because it is a contest. Ah. <laughs> All right, let's <laughs> see God, what he nice. rolls. You know what? Last fortune point. They're all Here comes done. the corruption. <laughs> oh, what is his? His gamble what is, is thirty-five. His... That is a victory to you. Oh, <laughs> narrow win. Fortune point well spent. Bernard, why do they look tense and sweaty? It's what well, must be hot in there. Was he playing games while I'm out here in the sun? Yes, I think they're playing some kind of card game. Right. E- Meanwhile, inside, Egon see- reveals the last card, and it barely saves his bacon. Yeah, you both, like, openly... Again, you are betting on Port Reaver. Both of you cheated, for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. There, There is no amount of aces that could come up less than, like, four uh, without really bringing suspicion here. And you see, they, they kind of, like, look over... <sighs> All right. All right. You win. Fair and square, right? He says Fair with and a square. grin. Well, he uh, pulls out his hand again. Good game. He takes your hand. Good game. Well played. What happened, Bernard? I don't understand the rules. He showed some kind of weird card with a person giving themselves brain surgery, and then they shook hands. What's brain surgery? What's that thing you do after somebody dies? And you remove their brain? Oh, I don't do that. You mean a tanner? I mean, they do it too. No, they were playing cards. Yes, but they just showed a weird character on a card, and then uh, Manfred shook his hand really fast and rather tense. I mean, so we could just ask him. Uh, e- Manfred, I'm oh, sorry, Egon, technically, uh, looks to looks to Frederick and says, uh, after uh, putting his foldable stool away, uh, uh, you don't mind me uh, bringing in an extra pair of hands to uh, carry this thing. Uh, looks heavy. He shakes his head, says no, not wrong. Alright, and uh, I uh, go to the tool shed door, open it, look outside, see I'm you too. <laughs> Don't mind her, she does this Ow. sometimes. Um. Hey, Berard, get in here. <clears throat> oh, this about brain surgery? No, but even better. Oh, good. The guy, the guy looks towards you and says, "That thing that they do when people die." Yes. Well, they do that here. Why are you guys talking about Wild. brain surgery? I don't know. You have the pictures. Wait, what kind of brain surgery is conducted here? Hang on, this might be good for my notes. All she right. takes out a book and starts like walking over, sits right. down. <laughs> Pause. Time out. Berard, come here. Help me with this box. I don't want to hear about the brain surgery. We'll discuss that later. Or one, right. two, oh. heave. 
and we lift. Lift with your legs, damn it. I'm old damage. leg. I have the Stevedore's Guild license. Why am I helping you? Isn't that what Eggwolf's for? Look, he's not here right now. <laughs> Actually, they are here, but... Yeah, they're uh, like they're a couple of meters <laughs> away talking to each other. Yeah, but they were just out of line of sight. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't as brazen as those two bozos. I'm just imagining Gerard fully standing up and Manfred still trying to gain some more height, like, lift you with your legs! Make it higher! Indeed. And you're like, no, can't do it, there's no more to lift. <laughs> All right, so uh, how heavy is this box between the two of us? Not a lot, actually. It's not very heavy to carry by yourselves. You can carry ah. the two of you kind of easily. Uh, right. But it's but it's still very like it's very uh, wobbly because uh, Berard can't lift it very high. It also doesn't help that whatever content it is, it keeps sliding from one side to the other as you're carrying. Oh, jeez, be careful. And kind of right. like every time uh, you tilt it a little, the, the weight goes heavily to that side, and uh, you hear just like scraping sound. Oh, jeez. All right. Tell you what, let's let's get out, and uh, we start going out, uh, and we get, get get out the door. Uh, Ashlyn, get 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 over here. Wait, but he was gonna tell me about the. All right. All right, Frederick. Uh, pleasure doing business. No hard feelings, right? Not at all. All right, good, good. All right, let's get out of here. And we, uh, we leave. Uh, it does Egg uh, is does Egg Wolf look, uh, like big and burly enough to hold this thing by himself? Yeah, one-handed. Oh, jeez. All right, as hey, you're as guy. you're kind of like <laughs> as you're kind of struggling, it comes to you. One help. Uh, uh sure. Yes. Okay. And picks he it picks it up and kind of like puts it over his shoulder. His arm is l like long enough that he carries over his shoulder, no problem. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not even impressed. Me. Yeah. Did well, not. That was very impressive. You lifted that up when those two could barely hold it. Mm. I have a very strong mother. Hmm. Impressive. All right. Good an explanation as any. All right, let's go find a I don't know an alley somewhere. Uh, you cannot see his. You can see his mouth because of the beard, but you can guess he's smiling. Um, All right. Yeah, you find yourself an alley, not long, long from you from there. All right, we. Uh, all right, Eggwolf, put it down here carefully. <clears throat> all right. Sorry, boss. Crowbar, my trusty friend. Stab. And yeah, ah. uh, yeah. With a crowbar, doesn't even take a test. Uh, you kind of like just loosen the the thing, and it clearly has a cover. First, there's a piece of of wood there is to be kind of like th that is made to be crowbarred away, and you see a amalgamation of mirrors. They seem to be a lot of them are hand mirrors. But a lot of them are like loose pieces of glass. The hell is this? What did I just buy? That's amazing. Have you seen so many mirrors before? Hmm, those could be useful. My brother in law has a hallway full of mirrors. Right expensive they were. Are they so really upset when I cracked one? Well, as, as soon are they? as as soon as Berard mentions that they're expensive. Egan is going to look for the most valuable one. Uh, what do I need to roll? In my, uh, what's the modifier for an evaluate? I think it's an evaluate. I think it's going to be challenging because you you are dealing with like sharp pieces of glass, so it is a little dangerous. So that makes the test a little difficult. But challenging is fair. Nope. Meh. My old friend, seventy. <laughs> Don't worry, I did a tiny bit better than you. All right. This, uh, I guess this all just looks like broken glass. Holy crap! <laughs> well, 
Oh, Somebody it's okay. I'm used to broken glass. I had to pick them all up. You didn't get it cut, did you? Wait, we all have evaluate? I mean, I just have it in my skill list. It's not it's, it's one of the human skills that you can get for your background. Oh, yeah, that's right. I actually have it in my, like, career. That's why I thought it was so weird. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, you grab, um, Berard, you actually notice with the, as, like, Egon is basically, or Manfred, is kind of, like, shuffling pieces of glass and these, like, hand mirrors from one side to the other, you grab a, you see and grab almost like a portrait uh, it seems to be a little mirror that you would put on a desk to see. You know those like makeup mirrors that people have? Yeah, Alexis it's like, has one. Kind of like angled for you to sit down and be able to see your face. Um, it looks I like that. I don't have one of those right now. No? I have to get a new one. Oh, never mind. You had one. All right. The... Oh, these. These are real fancy. But I got this weird bend in them, and it make your face bigger. My sister bragged about it all fucking day. Your hmm. face is plenty big enough. Tell you what, let me uh, let me hold on to that one, and I'll see if I can uh, I'll see if I can get us a point for it. <laughs> Egon just completely ignoring Ashling at this point. I am so sorry. They came out way meaner than I thought. <laughs> uh, <laughs> also, we're we supposed to be looking for a map. Give it to Manfred. And weren't we supposed to be like looking for a map or something? <laughs> 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 Look, side uh, quests are wired. Okay, it's fine. Yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Never played. <laughs> so tech is like. <laughs> the Hitachi is like playing marbles on the ground. <laughs> um, Surely so, yeah. the warm bloods are hard at work doing what needs to be done. <laughs> Barely. Hey, this is the great plan. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. Follow the plan. <laughs> Alright, so. Uh, I take the evaluate? fancy... Does the rest of the box look like it's something that could be pawned off? Because glass is very rare. And I imagine even more so in Lustria. Mirrored glass especially. Yeah. Uh, Possibly, yeah. A lot of it is like broken glass, which is not as valuable. Of course, it is a rare thing to have. But being rare doesn't necessarily make the price like skyrocket if people don't need it. Uh, mm. And... Looking at the, like, people around you, people don't seem to care about their uh, appearance as much. Uh, okay. But you think you could probably sell it for, for a price, uh, either here or in another city. So, hear me out real quick. This is completely out of character. I have flour, we just need little bulbs, and we could fill it with glass and make explosives. <laughs> Let's not. Do that. <laughs> I'm sure that would not come back to bite us at all. <laughs> I, How would it? It would be fine. <laughs> I'm very excited for the lore reason to go from nun to engineer, but it well, is I going think... to be no, not 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 engineer. New world terrorist. <laughs> no. No, that's yeah. an American. <laughs> no, it's nungineer. I don't want to do you this try. anymore. <laughs> so tech, so tech. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. It's not worth it. I mean, it's been great, but like, oh, not worth it, man. Not worth it. Uh, so yeah, you guys find. Uh, but <laughs> back to the subject. Uh, Egon, oh yeah, we were doing things. You, Egon, you are able to find a marketplace. There are people trading. Uh, you can reasonably find things from the trappings list if you want to buy something all right um but yeah i uh i had like lusty gyms in mind because 
they actually care about their appearance. Considering uh, their stock and trade. So I'm going to see if I can pawn this fancy mirror off of there. A reasonable mm -hmm. assumption. All right. So, um, actually, he doesn't. He doesn't much care about the rest of the broken glass or such. He, I, th I think we kind of got what we needed out of this. Well, this mystery no, box. No, we need that broken glass. No, we don't. Think about it. We could throw it in something's mouth. Yeah, let's let's not do that. Let's go get close enough to throw glass into something's mouth. Actually, I'm saying this all out of character as a joke. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, as we like, <laughs> the Shaolin uh, just like take the broken glass. <laughs> I was getting the sin point evaluation here. <laughs> like, oh, hmm, where does that fit in? Much? Yeah. But uh, yes, uh, Egon yeah. is sort of like stirring the crate with the crowbar, like looking to see if there's anything else of value, but. Uh, if there is, uh, most likely there isn't, and he's probably, he's probably gotten the most value out of this box. And besides, it didn't cost yeah. him anything, thankfully. Yeah, honestly, like, there's no change in situation, so the the role is what it is. The only thing Berard was able to really find was this special mirror. This kind of like magnifying mirror, but aside from that, you find nothing All else. Right. I say we head back to Lusty Gyms because if anyone in this, well, anyone in this place knows naked bodies, it would be the people who work there. So, uh, I say that's as good a place as any to start. That seems to make sense. Yeah, right. And we head there. Okay. Uh, you you had to the uh you had to the lusty gem. Uh, the atmosphere has not changed since you've been there. But Berard, you probably didn't go in on the on the other side on the other dime. So you notice the debauchery, the gambling, the drinking, the sex, uh, and all of the like marvelous atmosphere that is the uh the ambience that is lusty gem. Egon has Berard's an intrusive gaze thought of thinking. Gaze is fixed to the floor. Ah, e e Egon has a, an intrusive thought of thinking. Man, what if we just stay here? Wouldn't that be great? But he uh, he realizes that uh, that Twin Tail would be very upset, <laughs> and uh, shakes the thought. And you know, so would the ship's worth of comrades who have been captured. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, human lives. We care about that. Yeah, humans. No one cares. But but skink life, skink lives matter. Oh yes. I so. mean, can they be comrades if the document that lets you get in was forged? Ah, uh, maybe. Why not? All right. So, uh, Egon slash Manfred is going to uh, is a uh, is lust uh, is uh, lusty Jim himself uh, present. Uh, yeah, he is. He's right. doing kind of like a, a little a little trick with like alcohol and fire, one of those kind Ooh. of like cascading uh, shot glasses, you know. Oh, that's cool. Uh, that's and he finishes cool. it up like one of them explodes, but you know, no one cares. Eh. Uh, and it's as it explodes, glass. and he kind of looks towards you and says, "Yeah, no, yeah, don't need to worry. One of the girls will clean it up." Uh, boys, you can, uh, receive those that are entering. Oh, you're back already! <laughs> Damn, buddy. Old pal. Um, uh, sit down here. Alright. Can I get you something? Uh, some dice, some drinks, some pussy? What do you want? Uh, you know what? I'm good for now, but I actually, uh, I might have something for you. And, uh, he goes into, uh, his sling bag. Oh, oh you have something for me. It's very early for this. The mirror on the oh. table. That's very anticlimactic, but... Well... I will also accept this as flirting. Yes. He grabs the mirror. 
as you can see, very high quality glass. Is he is he uh, gazing at himself in the? He in the he is. Uh, he's kind of like looking at himself. Uh, takes a little uh, takes a little of the of the like. I don't say vodka, but like the alcohol that, from one of the spilled glasses, and kind of like fixes his eyebrow. He goes, "Well, this it is indeed a very quality." Am I going to have uh, to worry about a bunch of par- pirates that you shanked one of them outside the bar? Because, like, you went outside for, like, 30 minutes, and now you're back with this mirror? Um, no, 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 no. Don't worry. I uh, wanted a game of cards down by the docks. You so... went to play cards outside of my establishment? I mean... Oh, uh, now you're going to hurt have... his feelings. You don't have mirrors on uh, for winnings, do you? Maybe I should. Well, tell you what. Perfect opportunity yeah. has just arisen. And I was wondering if you'd be uh, interested in buying this quality mirror from me. I'll give you a special deal. All right. Honestly, I, I there's a lot of mixed signals here. I really can't tell. Uh, but let's say I take your very special deal. How much is going to be that? Hold on, I'm actually just looking up what a hand mirror <laughs> cost. Egon, support, With my your, support your LGS. <laughs> <laughs> With my value, uh, would I have been able to figure out how much it was worth? Uh, when I gave it to Man Trade? Yeah, yeah. Um, it could be. It really depends on a lot of things of like the the quality because it's not only the glass; it's also the frame of the frame of it. Because I didn't oh, get to describe, wow. but it has like almost like a marbly display around it. It could cost anywhere from one gold crown to two gold crowns. Yeah, I just checked. Hand mirrors are one gold, one shilling, six pennies. God damn. Mirrors are damn expensive, but it makes sense, I guess. Uh, well, the the Warhammer say, World mirrors are the old style, right? So aren't they backed with silver for the yes, reflection? Yes, they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's probably why. Mm-hmm. There's, there's silver and then there are mirrors. Uh, uh, he <laughs> says, for the low, low price, one gold crown. How's that? He looks at the mirror closely. He looks at one of the girls that he has. I don't think that's a bad deal, honestly. But I do have a counter proposal, if you wouldn't mind. All right, let's hear it. What are you doing later? Ha! Later? Mm. Depending on the time, I might be sleeping. I have a half a bottle of this very tasty uh, Bretonian brandy. Ooh, that stuff's illegal back home. I have shared drinks with most of my... You know, sharing drinks with employees is very boring honestly and most of my clients are very smelly you actually smell not so bad not asking for anything else sniffs armpit I will float your boat I am just asking for a drink how about that alright sounds like a good deal is that on top of the gold crown on top of the gold crown, yes. Ooh. I don't see how I lose. Uh, he gives you a smile. He picks up, uh, kind of like goes to the back, picks up a gold crown and brings it to you. It's a little different from what you're used to. It is uh, an Estallian gold crown. Uh, very similar, but it has like different markings on it. Yeah. Probably more like Mermidia flavored. Yeah. 
uh, than not. And well, he uh, slides it across the, the, the table. Egon takes it and puts it in his coin purse real quick for anything no anyone notices. All right. He... So, how about a toast to a uh, to a deal uh, to a well to a deal between friends? It's your smile and says, "Of course." And he grabs a couple of bottles and uh, starts serving some drinks. Is this just for me and him, or does he pour he, for the? He serves for both of you, and for for like only you two, unless uh, unless you like point to someone else. Uh, just stand you know there what? awkwardly. Yeah. Oh, Bernard, let me introduce you to some of the ladies. No, 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 thank you. Oh, come on, here they're really nice, and I'll walk over. So this is Lily, this is Cassandra, this is, uh, oh, I didn't catch your name. Um, it would be Karen. Yeah, and I just, I keep going through them, and I'm just like... So this Bernard is has friend. one hand over his eyes, blocking the view, asking, who stole all of their clothes? They're dressed more than Priestess of Raya. Uh, one of them puts the, the, the her hand over her head and says, Oh, pretty me. A mean old pirate stole of my clothes. Could you help me find them, dear? You're going to say no to that lovely young lady in distress? I think she went <laughs> that way and she points to one of the, one of the closed rooms to the side. Well, if it, are she another worker here? Also, that like for employees. Uh, one of the other girls whispers in your ear. He's quite. Uh, is he like simple or is he unexperienced? He's um. He's young. And the... A little dumb. One of them says, um, "Why don't you sit here with me, and I will explain the nature of my work." Oh, and I then I just leave I him there and walk out. Take your uh, out, and he will point to a corner. Oh. I'm fine, and I think you can find your own clothes. Please just leave me alone. All right, I respect that. And she backs up. <laughs> uh, there is, however, one of the ladies and that comes up to you, Ashley, and says, Although picking on one of your friends is nice, uh, I would like to inform you that it does get very cold here at night. Sorry, foul of celibacy. We don't need to know anything nasty. Nah, I'm good. Walks away. You're Strike a very two. frustrating bunch of <laughs> bunch of clans, <laughs> you know that. <sighs> if only Tatic I was there. Body warmth. <laughs> <laughs> the skink with a bunch of ladies like no one knows. How does the skink get so much ass? Burrard uh, hides behind Eggwolf and mutters to Tall. The guy likes big booty and cannot lie. Uh, Eagle is kind of like Listen, drinking. I try. I try really hard not to not to put too much of myself in my characters. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, honestly, yeah, that's just precious. Uh, Eagle, you get to the to the corner, and like Eagle and Ingvar are there, uh, and Eagle kind of like as you glimpse, he kind of like clasps you on the shoulder, and is like, 
you don't need to do anything you don't want to do. Here, a, a little beer. Uh, and he picks up, his hand is massive, so like the, the cup of beer looks, the pint of beer looks minuscule. And he just puts it in, in front of you. And Ingvar seems to be frustrated. He doesn't have any money, so he can't really do much. Aw, poor guy. <laughs> yeah, he's just like looking around, kind of like flirting with someone. And then like oh, when they offer the price, he just says he doesn't have money. And the, like, the person walks away. Um, and yeah, all of you guys... Uh, do we have anything else we would like to talk to? Do something else in the city here? Or can we I mean, skip a little bit to the field? Honestly, may as well skip. Yeah, I think I'm good. Hmm, Brard's thinking if you should ask about people with maps. But we'll look at all the ladies and decide he's safe next to Eggwolf and not do so. Traitors all. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, if you want to, you can ask around. Uh, you can do like a charm or a gossip check for, for talking to people and seeing if you get some information. After deciding not to, Berard's gonna look at uh, Ingvolf or Ingvar. I forget what his name is. It's hard to give you... Uh... Ingvar. Yeah, Ingvar. Yeah. Ingvar, you know, since we don't have any coin, he says slightly loud so all the ladies can hear, uh, he's going to grab Ingvar. There was uh, that crate of glass. We could probably get a few pennies for it if someone hasn't nicked he, it. He kind of interrupts you and says, Look, man, I'm very desperate, but not that much, okay? I barely know you. What? What? <laughs> Your loss, and he's gonna walk out of the inn and go see if that box is still there with broken glass. And he's gonna gossip with people as he tries to pawn it off for pennies. Oh, sure. Uh, do a actually make make just a, a D one hundred check. Oh, I didn't see your message, Ben, by the way. Uh, you can find some of those. Yeah. All right. Unfortunately, you talk around. No one seems to be very interested. Uh, a lot of people here are trading in necessities or uh, luxuries. So, like, a lot of people are trading in food and timber and, uh, like, silver, gold, pottery. Things that are either like things you need to survive, either for the journey or for being in Port Reaver, or that you would be able to sell for a big profit elsewhere. The mirrors, a lot of people don't know what mirrors are. So like trying to explain it to them, they just kind of block it out and don't seem to be very interested. Uh, at least in Port Reaver at this time, it's going to be hard to sell these things. That's fine. It's a cover to gossip with people. Mm -hmm. uh, what, are you, what do you want to ask them about? Uh, I will chat and tell stories about uh, like hidden treasure maps that drew him to Lustre to begin with and how he heard stories about like people having maps where treasure is like tattooed onto them mm -hmm. to see if he gets any recognition from anyone. There was, there is one of the guys that you talk to. It's actually one of the workers for Lusty Gym. Uh, you see one of the pit fighters, one of the guys that works that kind of like fights on the on the little corner of Lusty Gym. Uh, you're kind of talking to him, and he mentions that he did see something like that. That it was really weird when he saw it the first time, but he. Uh, but they said it wasn't a tattoo, it was a birthmark. Gotta be extra special then. Yeah, that's, you know, that's what I said, but they just treated it as, as if it were nothing, so I just kind of uh, ignored it. If they have the thing and they don't care, why would I care, you know? 
You think if I brought it up with them, they'd give me a cut of whatever they find when they go there? I don't think they treat it as a treasure map, honestly. I'm sure I could convince him. I'm very convincing. He says, scratching an entire chicken pox-like arm full of bug bites. Let me at him, and I'll, I'll even give you a cut if we find out what's in there. Hmm? He says, well, he's very pushy, so I don't think t talking to him is going to be very difficult. But yeah, you can go ahead. And he points, and he points to Lusty Jim. Or oh, type back what I said. <laughs> yeah, I would. I, I imagine that's like there's a lot of people that go the exact same route. Like I can convince them, and then it's Lusty Jim, and I like, oh, I don't want to anymore. It's kind of he's a lot. Yes, that that is the case. Yeah. Oh boy. Anyway, oh, go to go for a round. I'm sorry. No. Which was it? No. It was fist fight, not, not fucking. Just, just to be very clear. Uh, <laughs> Brard will look at him and say, Do you think anyone would bet on me? And I could bet against me. Because I won't take a fall, but I'm going to lose. Look, Lusty Jim has a very clear message here, and he respects short kings like you. Okay, so you don't say mean things about yourself. What? What? Anyway, like, it's not a thing of batting, it's just like some fun. And there's a lot of drunk people here, they don't even care who they're batting on. Just, you know, oh. punching each other in the face for a little fun. That oh, doesn't sound like fun. Yeah, you're gonna have a hard time convincing Lusty Jim of anything, really. Oh. One second. I will go and find Ashlyn. <laughs> yeah. Ashlyn? She's currently <clears throat> clearing her throat, but having a full conversation about the breakdown of human anatomy with another patron who accidentally said that she knows how to pleasure a body. And Ashling is talking about electromagnetic prods. I think I'll go to Manfred first. Oh, what do you need? Oh, uh, I may need your help shortly. Um, with what? Uh, putting my face back together. Are you about to start a fight? No, I've been asked to join a fight. Oh, way different. Yeah, of course. Alright, I go find Manfred to figure out if he can make money off of this and if I can get some before I decide to get my face punched. Wow. Does he find me? I don't know. Are you off alone in a room with Big Jim? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, no, you, you're able to find him. He just says to like grab a, a drink later. But you're kind of at ah. the bar currently. Fair. Alright. I'm uh, mostly just hanging out, enjoying the view, uh, taking in all the splendors that civilization has to offer. Monfried? Hmm? Why do fights here? And apparently people are too drunk to care who they're betting for. So... One of them wants to fight me. And he will flex his barely strong arm. And we'll have a feeling how that fight's gonna end. Hmm. And if I'm, I'm gonna get my face punched... I'd like to make some money out of it. Well, let me, uh... I'll chat with, uh, whoever's holding... Well, whoever's booking the bets. And, uh, let's see if I can put some coin on it. 
Uh, Brad will nod and leave, assuming that uh, Manfred has understood he's going to lose. And will go set up joining this uh, pit fighter to get his face stomped. All right. Um. No. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I was curious. I was curious of uh, how, how Egon felt, but yeah, it was it was really obvious. The um, as you get there, you do see the bookie. Um, it's kind of like a, sh a short guy with a little a little uh, a, a little beret. And he's taking uh, some of the bats. He has like a large yellowish book and some piles of pennies around. And uh, you see, he starts going. And as the fight is announced, uh, they start doing they start doing some some of the batting. Um, the the actually the pit fighter gives you two options, Ben. Uh, currently, there's not a lot of people in the bar, so the amount of money that's going to be like generated by the fight is going to be very little. But soon, there's going to be like sundown, and then the tavern, like Lusty Gym, really, really uh, gets full. So uh, he offers you the choice if you want to fight when there's nobody in, or if you want to fight with a full house. Because full house, you probably would get a little bit more money, even if not by not by much. Oh, I I think I'm a good for a warm up, but maybe not the main uh, event, as it were. Mhm. Mm uh, so yeah, no, Berard goes for the not as many people to see him uh, pathetically trashed. Okay. Uh, he he kind of like. Gives you a nod and leads you to the uh, to the little arena. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do ex essentially it's going to be a um, it's gonna be the same as if you were like a gambling check, but we're gonna be using melee brawling. Uh, do right. you have melee brawling? Nope, it's Four. just a weapon skill test. Yeah, so it's gonna be st a straight uh, weapon skill test. Uh, what's, it is what's not your weapon skill per chance. My weapon skill is twenty-four. Jesus Christ! And only with training have I gotten my strength up to thirty. Oh boy, this will right. go well. <laughs> yeah. My God, uh, Egon could punch Berard out. Uh, again, okay, I'm, I'm gonna be using with your dice. I don't know. <laughs> Ashling could punch him out. Yeah. So, as it is a as it is a show fight instead of being like a real uh kind of to the death fight. Uh, there is not going to be damage unless the difference between your success level and his is higher than five. Then okay, so we're there will be damage. To do then there will be damage because then, like, probably there's gonna be some punch that he throws to you that is like too strong that can cause some some real damage. Otherwise, it's gonna be just like throwing you around. It's gonna be some bruises, but not something that would quantify as like true wounds, you know? Only my pride will be injured. Yeah. Um. So, uh, he rolls first. It's gonna be a plus one. Oh my god. Jeez. <laughs> uh, not one. Right. One percent that chance is. that he gets it. Uh yeah. Ben, you're gonna Nailed do me it. automatic success. Bear, ben, you're gonna do me a favor. You're going to describe to me how this fighting looks. Cause it ends real quick. Bernard, you got this. Falls over, punches him in the face. It it ends really, really fast. So I want you to give me a little bit of description of what it happens, and then I'll spice it up afterwards. How Wait, about that? you didn't? Did you bet against yourself? <laughs> That's no, I didn't no. bet against myself. Okay, good. Here's 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 the real. Actually, I now 
I implied that. Uh, well, that's the thing. Uh, do we actually take that intuition test into account? And Egon just had no idea what Berard was talking about, and he actually bet on him. To be fair, I, I didn't ask for a roll. You roll by yourself, so I'm gonna let let you decide the results of it because. I didn't really have an idea of yeah, what yeah. you were rolling for. Like, yeah, I was like, is the like, scene I was, was played like, that does the miscommunication was there? Yeah, yeah, or could be there. The thing is, like, I kind of just either go my for it or uh, you could flip a coin if you want. Yeah, honestly, let's let's do a coin flip. If I there's a there's a built-in coin, coin flip function. It, there's a D two. So, All right, on a on a one, I yeah. bet on. I bet on Berard. On a two, I bet on the other guy. Hey! Ha -ha, we did it! Alright. Now, I would have taken that gold crown. Would they have taken that as a bet? Uh, you were gonna bet a gold crown. Okay. I was. They take it. Holy crap. The, the thing is that, like... The... The result of it is limited by the pool of money. That's fair. So it is not one of those things of like, because it's not like a huge betting house. They don't have funds on the back that they can supply for whatever crazy bet happens, you know? Oh, but they were totally willing to take my money. Yeah, but they would take yours, but also like whatever, because you wanted to bet a gold crown. They're not going to say no to a gold crown, but... The amount of money you can win is very limited by just a pool of money that is there. Okay, That's this fair. is Twitch gambling. You just get the huge proportion of the other people that bet <laughs> against me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, it, it is limited to the pool of money that is already on the table. It's kind of like poker, things like that. You, you may bet as big as you want, but if people don't bet with you, you only get as much money. Uh, and... Alright, <laughs> so, so yeah, you, Barard you is... Yeah. Mimicking fights he's seen, doing the little hop back and forth, very much in a not actually good boxing manner. And as his giant opponent goes to go after him, it's mainly the difference in height that throws him off, because Burrard is small and scrawny. And at some point as he leans down, Burrard's fist accidentally hits his chin as he flails upward. At this point, I think it'd be funny if the guy falls on Berard as they both fall over. Uh, yeah, he actually goes, like, he is quantifiably larger than you. He goes for almost like a bear hug, because this is not a fisticuffs, this is not fighting. This is not like boxing, this is pit fighting. It's no rules, uh, except for, like, gentleman's rules of what is off limits. So he goes almost for, like, a bear hug, and as he goes for it, you throw like a like a hook upwards and you fully clock him on the on the chin and he just continues the motion of bear hugging you but now unconscious so he just falls on top of you uh unconscious and you have a very hard time like trying to get out of the body uh, uh, before well, some of the other awake. guys come, and the the book the book he kind of like the the room fell silent. By the way, as that happens, the boom room fell silent, and they look. I at... knew you could do it, buddy. Wow, Bard is going to you almost stand like up, looking at his hand in awe. You, you almost feel like the someone in the audience is like, Witchcraft! Because <laughs> it's just so unlikely. Uh, actually, a lot of the people here, they start actually saying, uh, going for uh, cheating. Uh, some of the guys, are they start going like, did you, did you guys sell the fight? Whatever, what the fuck was that? That was so bad, I paid money for this. And the bookie kind of like calms people down. And he's like, yeah, uh, the newcomer wins. Uh, what is your name again? Uh, uh, Ard. 
Ard is the new champion of the Lusty Gem. What? what? That was the champion? It's whoever wins. Until someone beats you, you're you're the champion of the Lusty Gems. <laughs> oh, fuck. I will glare. Champion. I will glare at the Shrine of Rinald and have deep suspicions that this is some kind of prank. Uh, you see as they tried waking up the guy and he just like, straight up lost. And, uh, yeah, the book, he just carries him away. Now and about my winnings. He sighs and he starts <laughs> counting up the winnings. Um... Gerard's gonna look at Manfred with a huge apologetic, like, two feet scuffing floorboard, eyes downcast. Uh, yet, as he looks yet, towards at Manfred. And yet, you hear the clink of coin as Manfred walks over. Uh, how much and... Oh yeah, uh, how, how, how much... How much doth I win for my coin toss? Look, I am... I respect a one, right? It is very respectful. So, what you're gonna do... Roll 8d10 for me. Is this Barard or is no, this? No, 10d10. Uh 10 d 10 whoever whoever's stealing lucky. Because this is going uh, to be the amount of, of money you gain. My luck's now, gone. I used it all. Considering that I do nothing but roll high. I was gonna say, you want you want <laughs> you want Egon to roll it? Honestly, I if I do nothing but roll high, then yeah, I, I should probably do it. Uh it only goes up to eight, so I'll roll eight and then two to see how much. Okay. All right, eight, two. Honestly, not bad. That Honestly, was not bad. Pretty good. That's going to be forty-eight brass pennies. Holy crap! I'll take and it. a silver shilling. All right. So, hold on. Let me. Is it forty-eight? So that. Wait, 40. that's exactly four. Yeah, it's exactly four shillings. I'll take them. Nice. Yep. So one, two, three, four. Sweet. Uh, I five, am five. rolling in the dough. You, you oh, got, five. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you got you got one additional shilling. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. All right. Six. Sweet man. I am. I am rolling in that cashola. <laughs> The and you see that the guys there's a bunch of guys here and as as they're like fighting and as this is traversing the sun starts to come down and people start coming in and the legend of Ard the champion starts going through people and Ard 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 you actually start getting <laughs> challenges savage orcs are gonna start coming in. Dead hard! <laughs> <laughs> and you start hearing people um, you start hearing as people start mumbling that they don't believe it, but they see the guy unconscious, because like a few, a few dozen minutes pass, the guy's still fully clocked out uh, and they start going like alright, what is the oh, someone oh, it was the baby uh and they go like yeah there's a new there's a new champion of the lusty gym uh and you start getting challenges you start getting a bunch of these like old sailor pirate looking guys i heard he beat every contender with a single hit and satisfied every woman in a single minute <laughs> the women were not impressed uh yeah, none of the none of the sex workers seem to be very pleased with that rumor in particular, but you know. Uh when Berard gets if Manfred gives him a cut, he will mention that oh so that you know that map person we're looking for? Or Tehetekai's looking for. Yeah. Oh wait, hold on. Let me take away two, three, one, two, three, six. So I took away two shillings. Uh, yeah, I, uh, Egon hands you two shillings and six pennies. Oh, what? Where the? Where did you get this from? Well, 
betting on you winning. How else do you think you got it? What? Yeah, I told you to bet on me I losing. Thought... Wait, you, you asked me to bet on you. Wait. You know what? Let's not question it. Oh, but the guy, he's lusty, Jim. Wait, the the guy with the... But Taha Takoi is looking for. Yeah, that's what the... I will point to the unconscious man. He told me that Lusty Jim's got some birthmark. That's a map. Uh, um, well, I may have a way of finding out. Ha! Huh. All right. Well, Berard's going to go give five of those pennies to the Shrine of Renald. And he's going to say, do this one more time. <laughs> Please. And he's going to take whatever this, this, the toughest looking guy who shows up demanding a challenge. And I don't want to actually fight to win. I just want to try to survive a l more than a few seconds. Oh, the mad blood. Oh, the mad uh... blood. Oh, hang on. I actually have monies. Uh, ben. I will bet a silver shilling on the other guy. So that I can end this terrible <laughs> rumor of a champion. Uh, Ben. Heads or tails? <clears throat> Heads. Cool. Okay. Uh, you do your little, uh, your little prayer to Renaud. And you see a lot of people kind of like betching and, uh, talking to each other. And a lot of people are, like, starting to get to the, like, challenging part. But also some of them are scared because some of the rumors are very, like, the, the guy you knocked out is not a small guy by any measure of the imagination. Um, he was the running champion. It, it, it is very traditional here that the champion is a guy that, like, if you are the champion, you're able to just live on the tavern uh, for as long as you want, as long as you still are the champion. If you get defeated, you get thrown out. Uh, and you begin to get some of the challenges from people, and eventually there's a guy that formally challenges you. He enters the ring, throws his uh his like garments out to side. He the kind of like the shirt and the the sword he has. It's like this old, very strong looking fellow, darker skin, bald head. Uh, no beard, but has like a mean scar across his face. Um, and you somebody with like a happy scar running across their face. Uh, oh, that would be the Joker. Serious. Yeah, that would be the Joker. You want to know, know how I got these scars? <laughs> uh, I don't think we really want that. The uh, and the bets are starting to roll. Um, so tech. Yeah, what's up? As you are as, as you are in the shadows. Uh roll me a D4, please. Uh okay. One. Alright. So as the as the rumors are starting to get real uh like real, the, the batching is actually mostly equal. Uh so it's a one to one. So whatever money you get, it's going to be doubled. Uh, by the by the other side, so whatever you bet here gets gets one time whatever gets twice bigger if you win, otherwise you lose it. So let's do a little bookkeeping myself. Um, Ashley, you said you were going to bet one silver shilling. One silver shilling on the other guy. On the other guy. Uh, his nickname is Tiny. Oh jeez! Uh, oh, I, I feel, I feel deep fear. Egon, how much are you betting, and on who? I'll bet two shillings. I'm feeling risky. <laughs> on whom? On, you know what? Two, two out of two. I'm betting it on Berard. <laughs> oh jeez! Right. Always bet Berard's on Berard. <laughs> gonna walk past the bookie, look at the guy, and say. Can I bet against myself? 
<laughs> as he <laughs> looks <ethically>? at Tiny. <laughs> He he gestures, yes, you can, if you want to. Alright, I give him three shillings. Three shillings on Tiny. Uh, three sh- I'm either going to come out more wealthy, or I'm going to have the most epic tale, and three shillings is worth the price that Ronald was going to make me pay. So whoever is feeling lucky, roll me 5d10. Uh, I'm feeling lucky. Boop. Oh. Okay. Uh, so it's going to be well. Let's do a even thirty. So. Woo! Woo! We did it. Barad will enter, will enter the ring and bring himself to his massive five foot one inches in height. So there's a total of thirty six. Smaller than me. There's a total of thirty six silver shillings on the table. Whoo, big pot! So uh, each of each one of you gets uh, double whatever you bet. Uh, Barad, you do get a cut if you win. Uh, so aside from whatever money you get from like your own bets, you also get a, a cut of the money from the from the establishment uh, for your wins. Ah, so Brad's gonna get money no matter what. <laughs> so yeah, you're not gonna get as much. Like thirty, like six uh, six shillings is going to be way more than what whatever you you get paid here. But yeah, you, know, you are uh, you are rewarded for this. All right. Uh, as this is a little bit more uh, high scales, we're going to do three rounds. Oh boy. Oh boy. I am going to use Ingvar again, just to make it a little easier on myself. Uh, hmm. Am I going to be in it? If you win this again, that would be impressive. Uh, I'm not winning this again. <laughs> you see Tiny, which is this mountain of a guy. Tiny. Uh, he has this like uh, kind of like black shorts and kind of darker skin, and he uh, removes some of his earrings before coming to fight. Uh, your hands are covered in bandages, uh, like each their own, but you do notice that he slips something on his bandages. Uh, there's a there's a, a very pronounced uh, line of something underneath the underneath them at, at the range of the knuckles. Again. What was that, <laughs> Barad? Not understanding what's going on. Uh, the bookie. Uh, that is the ring of beginning fight, and he <laughs> fully punches a bell into the table. Uh, and he fully lunges at you. Again, it's going to be uh, it's going to be the same roll. However, you are going to take damage if the difference between your roll and his is of three success levels. Because this guy is not joking around. Uh, All right. But at the same time, if you win by three or more, you do also do damage to him. So, well, that's not going to happen. A plus six. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I rolled the I rolled the wrong number. It's a plus four. <laughs> that's that's only that. slightly less upsetting. Oh my god. Oh, oh, I am I, was I going, am a fair GM, to be fair. I was going to ask, I have knowledge of setting traps. Could I use that to try to not injure him or fight him, but just like trip him up with my knowledge of like where it should be in terms of how high his legs are? And try to just kind of kick out to trip him rather than to actually fight him. Honestly, yeah, sure. I understand this will not work again, but for the first shot. He is cheating, so it is only fair you cheat as well. Difference is. Oh, what will you do, Berard? 
as Let's it see, stands, the difference is four. Okay, so put five <laughs> resolve. I don't have five no, fortune three. points. Fortune, that's um, it. Amateur. I will, I will take this first punch. Hmm. As I try to trip his legs and realize his arms are much longer than my legs. Uh, so that's going to be... Uh, yeah, that's going to be four damage then. Uh, there's going to be four wounds to your face. Armor does not count. It's only reduced by toughness. Oh, that's you... fine. I don't have. I don't own armor. Yeah, just to be safe. Uh, right. I will take he, a wound. He twists on his side as you're coming to him. As he charges, he actually twists to the side, grabs your face, and pushes you towards one of the uh, one of the one of the boards that is like the side of the ring. And like fully pushes your head into it. Pow. Oh, bl- <laughs> I, well, I begin cursing <clears throat> loudly. Uh, as he kind of goes back and does a little sign for you to come at him, uh, we go for the next round. All right. I take my mighty swing. And I'm re-rolling that, because I will just die. Thank you, Dice. Thank you. Well, not as much, but he still does damage. Oh, uh, uh, you, you, could, you could re-roll this one. You're, you're, you got a minus three. <laughs> the, oh, wait, you uh, already re-rolled it. I, I, I already re-rolled it. <laughs> yeah, he re-rolled <laughs> He ducks and grabs you. Uh, actually, what do you do to punch him as you, you try hitting him? Uh, I am attempting my lucky shot of the uppercut to the jaw. He pushes your body to the side, grabs you by the shoulder, and knees you in the body. <coughs> uh, and you can feel a little bio of a, a little bit of puke that starts rising to your... Uh, on your throat before you kind of like push it back. All right, last round. I don't think our boy's gonna our, make it. As as I go up, can I spit in his eye? You can. For wow, sure. that's disgusting. Uh, <laughs> make that's a, a ballistic action. skill roll. I'll say ballistic skill. You know, just to see if you can hit him in the eye. All right. Challenging because I assume being close enough will give yeah, yeah. cancel out the aiming at something. Yeah, it's gonna. Oh, no. oh that was gonna I be a that. twenty-two. Screw these three D dice. <laughs> 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 you miss him. Uh, yeah, you fully miss him. He's gonna roll a straight roll. Oh, that's Uh-oh. a fumble. No, don't you do it. Oh my god, he fumbled! Knock yourself out. Knock yourself uh, out. Oh, he only got 21. Oh, wow, he uh, l- loses a wound, though. <laughs> god god damn. damn it, if you win, I lose money. Oh, please. Uh, <laughs> he uh, he tries to, like, uh, this is just for the, for the like, <laughs> trying to spit on his eye. Uh, he tries stopping the spit as like throwing his face over his uh, his uh, over, like his hand over his face, but he accidentally punches himself as he's trying to avoid it, kind of like sounding very confused. And then he looks at you. Uh, Want to go for a last round? All right. I'm presuming I'm already on the ropes at this point, as it were. Yeah, come you on. Are. Oh, come on. You can do it. Ah! Eh. I will use a... Uh, you know what? I'm good. I'm good. That I won't take damage, but I will lose. I'm, yeah. I'm comfortable with that. He, uh, what he does is he fakes a punch, grabs you by the legs, and fully vaults you over the board. And you flip and fall on the outside. Which is one of the terms for, for losing. 
is either like being knocked out or uh, thrown out of the ring. And he hey, you didn't rises. get knocked out though. There's pride in that. Uh, and he like rises both of his of uh, of his hands and like Yarr! and a little bit of the bar, uh, which is practically full by now, goes tiny, tiny, tiny. And... Bernard will stand up like they're cheering him. Ha! Huh. Uh. Uh, yeah. yeah, they uh, the fight ends. A lot of the people disperse, uh, and yeah, a lot of the people feel very justified and said you cheated on the last fight and loved this one. You clearly didn't because you lost. So kind of like just some gossip, and they go about their business. Uh, yeah, exactly. Five seconds of fame. Uh, and mm-hmm. now the uh, you see the bar kind of like. People start getting the their earnings. Uh, so for those that bet on Tiny, you get the double the money you got. Heck yeah! Uh, oh, so I that's going it. to be because before Egon was the only one that bet on Burrow, so he got like all of the earnings, and now it's more split. So people are getting uh, more or less their more money. Uh, I believed in you, man. <laughs> you shouldn't have. I didn't believe in myself at the start. Yeah, well, let's see where that got you. It got you money. Look where you look where you are right now. I have right, double drop. that money. All right, drop money and boom. Uh, as as the fight kind of dies down, uh, we're gonna jump real quick to the outside. Uh, meanwhile, with the Hetakai. Meanwhile, with the Hetakai. It is and... about break time. Yeah, I, I I was gonna say. I uh, think yeah, it would be better let's take, for us let's to take, do a break. Let's, let's take a break first. Um, yeah, and then we'll go come back to the other guy. And Why are the ingredients in Spanish? <laughs> we're gonna start with the age-old question of Lustria. Ah, dehydrated potatoes. Yes, they are potato chips. They're also sun chips. There you go. And meat uh, chips. And I was gonna chips. ask if hot and dogs are chips. sandwiches, but I think that's not important. <laughs> Anyway, the Hetakai. Hot dogs are not sandwiches, they're tacos. Hetakai, oh, Edge of like... Town, uh, Sundown. Um, yeah, you... you uh, unless you want to be doing something, you're basically on the outside of town. Kind of uh, once, it is, once it is dark and light... Uh, what, what's, the, what's the weather currently? Oh, ne- never ask that question in Lustre. Ooh, um, <laughs> but it's, it's Egon. I need to know. <laughs> Egon, as you are scared of the weather, uh, roll me a d10. Oh, gee, d10? What? Yeah, the weather is a d10. Six. I could have rolled, but I'm lazy like that. Oh, wow. uh, six, it is rainy. Uh, not Excellent. torrential rain, but it is just like rainy. Good. That'll make it easier. That'll make it even easier for me to hide. Um, so once it's actually dark and like there's shadows and it's raining and hopefully people are not wanting to really be outside or they're turning in for the night, uh, I would like to sneak into. Um, I would like to sneak into Port Reaver. All right. Um, I gotta say, make an easy stealth check. Okay. Uh, it is not rural, so just stuff. It is technically possible for me to fail this, but if I do, I will be very sad. It would it would already be an automatic failure, so don't don't feel too bad. I got three successes. She says that's this. Okay. Just going to do a quick roll here. Cool. Um, you, as far as you are aware, you enter undetected. Um, at least no one seems to be harassing you for anything. Uh, so as far as you know, you are not detected by anyone else. That's an ominous sentence. Uh, all right. So Tatika is basically just kind of like stick to the alleyways and the gutters. Um, doing his best to move through the settlement without attracting any attention. Like if he sees or hears any humans, he'll kind of wait for them to pass 
or be like distracted with something else before he continues moving. And basically, uh-huh. he's going to be uh, searching the port for signs of the the warm bloods he knows. Mm-hmm. Uh, doesn't take too long. Uh, as you see, uh, you can see the, your your friendly warm bloods uh, on one of the establishments, one of the war, one of the warm bloods houses. That is currently really full. It has a lot of people. Um, and he's he's basically he's gonna kind of, um. Uh, how how big is Lusty Gems? Like, is it like Lusty a Gems two story uh, building? Three story building. Big. <laughs> I, it I, is three stories. I feel like I feel like I feel like I know what joke you're making, but I'm gonna pretend like I don't. <laughs> <laughs> don't give um, the trolls any power. Uh, don't your feelings. You know it to be true. Tatakai, I want to climb the building so that I can observe through. Um, one of the windows, preferably on like the second or th- second floor, so that I don't have to worry about someone like walking outside and running into me. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, something you are very aware of humans, they don't look up very often. So, uh, just do an That's average, awesome just do an average climb check. I always forget we have a skill for climb. Oh, yeah. baby. Uh, a six. Very quickly, uh, nice. like a lizard, truly, you climb the, the wall and you're able to find perches on the on one of the windows. Uh, and you can see inside, there's a couple of different rooms. It's like a corridor that has uh, some rooms uh, that has about four different rooms. Uh... There are some noises happening on some of them. You're not sure what what noises they are, but you see some creaking. Um, uh, and there's a staircase that leads to a, a third floor. That's kind of like a basement. It is the just one single room that is underneath the the roof. That makes almost like a uh, not a basement. Sorry, um, I think it's a cellar. Yeah, cellar. Okay, it's like a cellar, but it's on the so so they they have an attic essentially. Yes, an attic. That is the word I was looking for. Thank you. I okay. was very confused. Uh, Tehetekai is going to... He's going to kind of hang around to where he has easy access to observing the first and second floor. And for right now, he's going to kind of focus on observing what the party is up to. Um, They seem to be counting coins currently. Uh, no, I am healing... My buddy's face. Yeah, yeah. Thank da- you. Tatakai will narrow his eyes at the indication that there's been some form of violence, but he's going to remain hidden for now. Oh, mm, I'm gonna re-roll this. <laughs> Punches him in the face. <laughs> I don't do much better. <laughs> I nail it. No, I don't. Fuck. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. There we go. Oh, at least you don't injure my face more. Uh, yeah, ironically, Ashling, you're so used to, like, way worse that you don't really know what to do, so you kind of just pat him in the face and it's like, yeah, you're gonna be- get better soon. Don't worry, this is only blocked by the mosquito bites. Wonderful. Rub some dirt in it, you went. <laughs> Kidding. Uh, yeah, but you see... Uh, yeah, you see your companions, they're kind of like counting coins, and Ashling seems to be doing the same thing she does to you, which is kind of like patting your face. Uh, but to Berard, mm. confusing. He's still trying to Warm figure blood. out the particular ritual behind that action. Uh, he is going to take out his blowpipe and load a dart into it, but for now he's simply going to watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, we cut to the inside, uh, four, four times of, like, timelines here. This is just after the fight that happened, uh, after the, the second fight with Tiny. 
and uh, as you're kind of like counting coins and healing your wounds and uh, analyzing what you're going to do. Uh, it's right. raining outside uh, just to kind of keep the, the bar is full and it is raining outside. The scene is yours. Question, Jim. Berard is counting coins right next to a bookie after he just lost a match. No one seems to be batting an eye. Okay. It is, as I, as I mentioned before, it is Port Reaver, baby. No one seems to care that you bet against yourself. Because it didn't seem to, it didn't seem to anyone that you tried to lose. <laughs> That's such a terrible way to get away with betting against yourself. So you remember when I mentioned gambling in the last session, that you go gambling and I think like everyone is gambling, you just can't get caught. That's kind of the same thing. People are thinking that either you threw voluntarily or you straight up lost. But as nobody saw you cheat, uh, no one really has a good argument. So they kind of just let it go and count their losses or their wins. A lot of people won with this. So it's not like the first fight where you won miraculously and <laughs> people were like, what the fuck is happening? The second one was like, oh, the skinny guy lost to the giant man. Very understandable. Right. Manfred, are we supposed to go uh, tell Twintail, or were we supposed to do something? I don't remember if he after asked us to like do anything. I mean, if we found what he was to, looking for, he asked us to find it first. So let me just confirm it, and I don't know. Maybe we'll go to the edge of town. He'll probably spot us. Oh, yeah. Music drop. Yeah, just putting some music back. Um, do a perception check. Um, uh, Egon. Alright. One moment. You have two names. It's always confusing for me. I know. It confuses me too. The uh, challenging? Well, yeah, that's the point, isn't it? <laughs> I was about, uh, yeah, it's gonna be challenging. I was about to call you uh, Egon Freed. It was very confusing for me. Ah, uh, hey, look at that. Chahetakai, you notice that Egon kind of like starts looking around. Are you going to stay hidden from him, or are you going to kind of like do some side? Uh, I no, I'm not going to reveal myself. Yeah, the, the revealing yourself to Egon doesn't necessarily reveal yourself to the rest of the humans that are inside. No one seems to be caring about the yeah, outside. Yeah, no, it's I, I, but... I do not wish the humans... I do not wish my warm bloods to know I'm here yet. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, just to clarify that. I They're, they're uh, helpful, but I don't necessarily trust them all that much yet. Very, you know, very understandable. Uh, yeah, Egon, you kind of think that it is really raining... He should be north at the edge of town, as long as you kind of like that's what you remember him saying that he was going to be there. All right, so if you'll excuse me, I have a I have a drink to celebrate. All right, go enjoy it. All right, I go and find the gym. Um, as it is getting to like nighttime and rain, uh, the rain is starting to pour. You very easily find Lusty Gem. Uh, through some of the some of the people that are working here, they guide you toward him. Um, and he starts leading you inside to the uh, next floor. All right, I follow. Uh, he goes I would, all I would, the way. I would also like to follow via windows. Mm -hmm. Um, it very easy for you. Uh, I, the plus six kind of like solves all of that. Um, he guides you to the second floor and keeps guiding you to the end of the corridor where you see a um, kind of like a spiral staircase made of metal that all leads right. you to the third floor. 
uh, there's a door, kind of like a wooden door with a metal lock. He grabs a key, unlocks it, uh, puts the key back in his pocket, and beckons you inside. I follow. Uh, and Hathakai, as you follow, both of you see this. Um, you see what seems to be a little... Um, um, fireplace uh, on the corner. The roof of the room is uh, kind of like leads to a point where there are a couple of lamps that are hanging from it. Uh, it is very, very much a, a, an attic, uh, an attic room. Uh, you see a bed, seems to be like a double bed on the corner. There's a large chest with some clothes. There's a lot of uh, clothes that are also like hanging from a very large piece of metal that goes from one side of the other to the room. Um, you see all manners of things here. Uh, and there's a little room on the corner that is uh, that has closed the door. It's very small. It's like three meters by three meters, the, uh, the little room. Uh, and again, like this room... It, despite being like an attic room, it is the size of the tavern, so it is very, very long and very wide. Um, you see a lot of boxes with decorations, you see a lot of boxes with like minor... Uh, he uses this as also like a storage room, so it has like cups and uh, old bottles of both full and empty, uh, of like wine and brandy. Uh, some of them seem to be written in uh, Kislevite. See some some bottles seems to be like vodka bottles. Uh, some some kegs of beer that also kind of like nest in the corner. Um, for a room that is also being used as storage, it is very well organized and very clean. Uh, as as you arrive, there is already a fire on the fireplace. A single log that is like catching fire, kind of like burned on the center. And he invites you in and points towards a little table that he has, a side table that has a vase with some flowers on it. Uh, that already has two cups and an old bottle of brandy on it. My, my, aren't you the romantic? As romantic as can be in this city, it is very far away from the luxuries of the old towns, but, you know, we do oh, what we must. To, you seem to have done pretty well for yourself here. Oh, I have. So, uh, Egon takes a seat. Uh, is the cup full or is it empty? It's currently empty. But as you sit, he closes the door, he puts the key in, but you don't hear him lock. He just like kind of like hands the key inside the, uh, the, the keyhole. And he goes to sit with you uh, on the... He doesn't sit on the other side of the table, he sits like uh, on your, to your side. And he picks up the bottle, opens it, and... He Puts a little, a uh, little bit of brandy for both of you. Uh, it's not a, like a, it's it's one of those whiskey bottles that's kind of like uh, rounded on the on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And he puts a little bit of it, and he grabs a little piece of bark that is on a little cup, and he picks it up, so it kind of like clicks it to the side of the of the glass, and then puts it on him his glass. All right, uh, Egon picks up his cup and uh, holds it out for it. He clings his cup to yours. Just to be and... clear, is there a window in this room? There is a window. There are two windows, or one on each side, uh, that have yeah. curtains, but they are the curtain is just open enough that you can see from the outside. Cool. If I am able to choose, I would like to choose the window where 
Egon is facing me and Lusty Jim is facing away from me. Yeah, no problem. Lightning strike. See skink in the window. Oh. Skink in the window. Um, yeah, you... Uh, both both of you sit. Um, as Egon and Hetakai are having this... Well, Egon is having the conversation. The Hetakai is creeping around. Uh, what are Berard and Ashling doing at this moment? Um, Berard's so, going to be looking around. Ashling, did Manfred ever tell you where our room was? Uh, no. I Wait, could go no, ask one I of the girls. Wait, I showed it to you, didn't I? Nope, wasn't paying attention. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, wow. <laughs> I love the confidence with which that one, was said. I'm just going to open the door. <laughs> Uh, I would say the Berard and I'll leave it up to to you, Egon. Actually, did you leave the key behind? Opening a random door. Uh, there's a pair of people having sex on the bed. Hmm. They don't stop. Berard closes the door. I don't think those are our doors. Okay, let's try this one. Opens the door. Uh, let's let's not. Uh, around five people are having sex inside the door. Barrage is frantically trying to reach back with without looking inside the room to grab the door and close it. Uh, what is it? Really, really Thank you! Rude. Okay. Oh, well, down two rooms. There's only, what, four left? Two Walks left, over actually. to the next door, opens it. Um, You see uh, five people sitting around a big map. Uh, one of them, it seems to be uh, separating a bunch of bullets. One of them is dealing with like a pile of what you presume is like gunpowder. And other one is like practicing lock picking on a, a fake lock on the side. Just oh, looks uh, in. Sorry, wrong room as he tries to fight with Ashling to close the door. Be safe, and don't let a flame go near that. Thank you! I'll leave my cigarette around it! That's dangerous! Closes door. Getting asked! My room! Walks over to... Skips one of the doors, walks to the last one. Okay, this one has to be ours, right? Process of elimination. I'll let you open it. Farrard looks at Ashling with trepidation, and he will go and kind of push on the door. Uh, it is locked. Well, look at us locking our door. Is that how we're doing? I'll go over to another door and open it. Uh, again, another group of people having sex. Yeah, that's gotta be it. Close. <laughs> Brard is bright red, with embarrassment, as he follows Ashling around. Uh, do you know how to open this door? You get a key. Where's the key? Does Ingvar Eggwolf have it? He would probably uh, actually leave it to Egon where the key is, because uh, he was the one that that hired. The, the 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 room, so he was given the key. So uh, I'll leave it up to to Victor to if you gave the key away or if you have it like in your pocket. Honestly, I think he has it on him. Yeah, yeah. From from what less you remember, Burard Egon has the key. Oh, slash slash man. So yeah, Ashlyn, did you ever finish that uh, conversation about um, oh, whatever it was? You were talking about like bits, bone, weird something. No, I have a lot of conversations about that, but what do you mean? Oh, you were upset when I got you for the fight because you were in a conversation with someone. You ever finished that? I did not. Well, why don't we, and he will shudder as he looks at the doors, go downstairs and see if we can find a 
the individual you were speaking with. And you can finish that conversation. I could. But I'd rather find Manfred and get the room key. Oh, but Manfred's up. Busy. Bird's going to become the good wingman and distract Ashling. And, well, if we're where he expects us to be, we can get the key right when he gets back. Oh, okay. I'll follow you then. All right, I lead Ashling downstairs, and I frantically look for the person she was talking to. Do we find them? I had I was muted. Sorry. Um, who are you talking to? I, I actually don't remember. Uh, some random person. Random person. Okay. Uh, you find a random person. Uh, they are still drinking on the on the downside. They're munching on some apples. Okay. Uh, actually, can I find um? A person in charge of the hotel, the rooms upstairs. Uh, that would be the primary person for that would be Lusty Jim. But you find uh, one of the asking around for the on the waitresses. You do find uh, one of the one of the women that is like responsible if Lusty Jim is away. Um, I'm just gonna ask her to go and open our door. Oh sure. Did you did you lose your key, honey? Uh. Oh. Well, we Manfred know where it is. Has it, and he's with Lusty Jim. Oh. Oh, the handsome man. Kind of blonde. Farad's yeah. gonna look at the lady and go, and under his breath, handsome. Have you seen the people that inhabit this place? Have you truly looked at them? Not for attractiveness. Honestly, from where we are, you and that blonde guy are very handsome. Something's anyway. wrong with this place, Ashwood. Yes, very much so. Can you open our door? Yeah, sure, honey. No problem. And she grabs a lockpicking kit and uh, goes upstairs. Uh, she quickly gets to the door, kind of like kneels down. Puts uh, these little pins on the door, kind of like, unlocks it, and, and then, right there, honey. Um, you can sleep well. Um, unfortunately, because you don't have the key, it's not gonna be able to close it. But there is a wooden bar on the inside. You just like slide it. There's a little, uh, there's a little thing on inside. You just slide the wooden board there, and it should be, uh, it should be locked. Thank you. No problem, honey. Uh, you guys need anything before you go? Need some refreshments, some food? No, I'm quite good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, whenever you finish, uh, if you need us to clean up before you go to sleep, just let me know, okay? Yep. What? And she turns around and goes downstairs. Barad's going to realize... Is standing outside a door where every other door on this floor is covered with people having sex and Ashling has just walked into the room and he's gonna turn bright red go inside and huddle in a corner all right well better. well we're someone's not a anyway. believer in when in Rome <laughs> really Uh, well, you, yeah, you both are inside the room. Sorry, uh, Ashley, I think you were saying something. Yep. I'm just going to look at Bernard and just say, well, uh, can you help me remove the sheets from this bed? I think that would be a good idea. Do you think we can lay... remove the bed from the bed? Well, I could just lay my, uh... My my sleeping bag across it, so we can if, at least have some, well, 
some comfort. If you say so, but I will help take the bed sheet off. And then wonder how often they do laundry here. And if it Not could ever enough. be enough. No. The sheets smell of lavender. <laughs> and they glow under dark light. Uh, both of you can roll and evaluate if you want to. I got this. Check it. Barad's trying not to evaluate this sheet. No, you can you cannot roll them if you want. Are you serious? Ashling, you are not accustomed to this a uh, type of uh, fabric. Actually, uh, you have no idea how clean or how dirty this is. So yeah, your conclusions uh, are. Uh, Barad will assist if he sees Ashling examining and just kind of like point to where he assumes will be the dirtiest bit, and not look. Which would give her a success. Okay. Uh, honestly, for an establishment of this nature, things are very clean. Uh, everything is very well folded, everything is... there are no distinguishable uh, stains on the on the fabric of the sheets or anywhere else actually um, most of the lanterns are like bolted to the to the uh, to the tables and the places like to just to avoid that they fall over at any case uh, most of them are actually bolted to the walls not on on any tables um, it seems that actually as this place is frequently used for sex, and people usually don't enjoy getting sick, or burned, or wounded, they kind of sex-proofed the room. Uh, so it is weirdly maybe cleaner than most establishments, which is probably creepier, honestly. It's probably weirder to you that this is so clean. It, it, it does give you a weird vibe of like, I am being... Uh, I'm being tricked. But yeah, this is your this is your analysis of the of the of the the rooms. Oh gosh, is it safe to grab this corner to pull? Brog yeah, has his okay. eyes closed. It's one of those situations where you're like, what are they hiding? <laughs> what are they hiding? Yeah, you get you get in a hotel room and the sheath is like pure white, and you're like, nah, not buying it. Someone was murdered here. That's the only reason they're this clean. Why do I smell lemon? Yep. Yeah, That's but me and Ashling are setting up the room, and if worse comes to worst, Berard just starts talking to her about beasts. Ooh. I would actually be interested in that, so yeah. Lemon? Um, so as I go towards the, the scene with uh, Egon and Hatakai, uh, if both of you want to interject at any point, if you want to do something else other than like organizing the room and doing the things like that, uh, you are free to interrupt me. Uh, but you can you can guess that like the scene is running at the same pace. All right. All right. Um, Egon, you are sit you are sitting um, by your side, um, Lusty Jim. Serves you a little bit more of the uh, Bretonian brandy. Um, kind of like twists about around the um, around the cup. Takes a sweat. Takes a sip. How much is Egon drinking? Is he Mother following please. Lusty Jim or is he going up but below he, Lusty Jim? He is. He is consciously taking sips when he does but noticeably shorter sips gotcha so he's he's giving the illusion of keeping up mm -hmm. um yeah as you are as you're drinking He takes a sip, and as you follow, he looks towards you, 
Uh, he doesn't have his full body turned to you. He's kind of talking diagonally to you. So, um, where did you come from? Hmm. Me? Oh, well, originally Middenheim. Middenheim? Cold place. Don't recommend. I know where Middenheim is, and I know what Middenheim is. Uh, I am just astonished that someone that has ever been to Middenheim would come to this place of all places. Oh, not been, born and raised. Oh. Oh, even more so now. Well, I happened to make my way up to Salzenmund, and, well, things happened to land in a specific way that I, uh, I heard of an opportunity, and I took it. All right. That's usually the talk of people that come here, actually. They either have too little to lose, or they have too much to gain. I'm well, surprised. I heard there was a treasure here, and thought I'd take my chance. See if I could find it. Did you? Haven't yet. Still looking. Usually people are either hell-bent on the treasure or they didn't find it already and are lingering. You seem well, to be taking your time. The thing is, I don't know if it's actually real. I don't know if I'll ever find it. Fair. That Takes is... another sip. That is very reasonable, actually, which makes me doubt it. Because a person this reasonable would not come here. Oh? You think me a liar? I am calling you a very clean liar. Not to say that I'm surprised. You know, I deal with liars all the time. Uh, and I don't condemn you for lying. But that I know you're lying, I know. All right. Which part do you think I'm lying about? The treasure. Egon yeah, goes no noticeably silent at that, and he's, he's, his eyes sort of start wandering, like, anywhere other than Lusty Jim. Because I think you are not here to look for a treasure. Because if you were, you would be especially not here. You would be with way more equipped than just that machete you got there. Unless you got another dagger, or you're just happy to see me. And especially, you did not ask anything about anywhere. And this is the first time I ever saw you. It is not Maybe. the... Com that is not the usual composure of a treasure hunt. Maybe I don't want to give the location away. That would be reasonable. Yeah, and I do think that is possible. I'm going to say. Um, but I am calling bullshit. Hmm. All right. Try me. Hmm. I think you came here for something way more precious than gold. You're not skittish. Egon, Egon is dead silent at that point. You are not skittish, so I don't think you're running from someone. You're not looking over your shoulder, so you don't have anyone hunting you. 
You're not looking or asking about a particular gem or a treasure long lost or a signet of a long dead dwarven family that came to Lustria 500 years ago. You're not really looking for something precious that would be counted as treasure, but not like gold. I think you're here for something else. What I can't figure out is what? Well, in that, he uh, holds out his cup for a uh, for a toast and says, "To miserable piles of seeds and uh, bling, down to the rest." Well, I ask my questions. It would be unfair for me to not uh, give you the chance to do the same. Have any questions for me, Manfred? Well, I am curious. How does a fellow like you end up sort of trapped here? I take it you have plenty of money to leave. Yeah, yeah, as we're being, if we're being truthful, yes. I have already sent a couple of people out of here, actually. Are you wondering doesn't, why? Doesn't answer my question. Hmm. Frustrating, isn't it? Yeah, keeping secrets. You would know something about that. <laughs> I am not a master of secrets by any way, but I am very good at keeping them. You don't get very far on a business of a gambling house or a whorehouse if you don't keep secrets. Sure. I'll... I'll believe that. Uh, out of character, is... You, I remember you describing Lusty Jim as being very light on clothing. Is he still light on clothing? Did you see the? Uh, I'll answer the question with another question. Uh, did you see the Vox Machina animated show? Um, I've, yeah, actually, I think we watched all of it so far. Do you remember uh, the shopkeeper, the guy that has like a magical item shop? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget his name, but I do like him. I also forget his name. He is dressed very similarly. Right. For those of us who mm. have not seen the show, what, what, is, a, what is a vague equivalent in description? I I was trying to remember his name because I... Uh, well, think, uh, like, think very, like, flowing, colorful fabrics with a lot of chest hair showing. Ah, I gotcha. Uh, man, I don't remember his name. Yeah, it's bugging me now. Oh well, but yeah, do I, do I get any like, uh, what's it called? Like, can I get a an angle if there's anything vaguely map shaped as regards to tattoos? Ah, yeah, okay. that's who he is. I thought he was. Oh, okay, never mind. I thought it was dressed slightly differently. That looks like a jacket. <laughs> yeah, it is open, as he is in a, a, a uh, open... He is in a more closed-off space. Um, so, yeah, he is wearing, like, uh, very similar to the image, kind of like an open... Um, this, like, open jacket kind of thing with nothing underneath, so it is... There is this like happy trail from his chest downwards disappearing into his pants. Uh, he's wearing like very baggy, uh, kind of like brownish pants. Um, he has some, not a, not a lot, but he has some rings and some different colors on his neck. Uh, and you do see he has some rings, uh, some earrings on his on his uh, Gilmore. That's ah, thing. that's what his name was. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so you are, um, you see that he has a very, a, a, a very open, uh, kind of like you can see his chest very clearly. 
Uh, make a perception check, actually. As we're very close, mm. I'm going to say average. Right. Um, average. To Hatsakai, as you're also... Oh, 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 oh. On as your money. <laughs> as you're clinging on the, on the, on the window, um, you would actually be on the back. So I'm going to say you can also do a perception check, but it's going to be challenging. Because it is uh, okay. raining, you are outside, you know. The whole deal. Hey, that's a pass. Yeah. Hey. Uh both both of you notice that he has a marking of some kind that goes up to his neck into his back. It seems to be a reddish marking, kind of like reddish or purple. Um, that is kind of like a line that goes up to his neck and then is hidden behind his clothes, uh, underneath his clothes on the back. All right, Egon. Uh, after uh, all of those, uh, after all of those uh, instantaneous tests, Egon uh, uh, holds out his cup again for a refill. Uh, and says, All right, we've both so far failed to answer each other's question. How about a truthful one? Each. Sir? Sure. I'm up for it. Well, you're the host. Go first. What is it? Where are you going for? Where are you going to right now? Skanky. Okay. You can ask your question. Yeah. He, uh, Egon gestures towards his neck and says, Call me curious, but what is that? Uh, he gestures at the like edge, edge of a edge of a tattoo. He he touches the neck on the place and he says, "Oh, this is a birthmark that I have. Uh, I asked for someone to tattoo over it. I think it's a very beautiful design, person. But I I was well. born with this." Do you care to share with the rest of the class? I answered your question, didn't I? Mm, you did. Well, goes back to you then, I guess. He fills your cup again. Uh, make a consume alcohol check for me. Oh boy. Here As you're starting to get deep on the cups. And I'll say, because this is the first check, and you said you were kind of like taking it lightly, uh, I'm going to say yeah. it's going to be average. Alright, here it goes. Hey! Cool. Clean success. Yep, you begin, uh, he fills your cup again, and you begin drinking. Alright. Alright. Your turn. What do you plan on doing on Skaggy? We lost our leaders. We're gonna see if we can get him out. Of job? Possibly a suicide mission, but hey, this damn cunt continent isn't. Mm. It is risk and reward at the end of the day. Yeah, it's been nothing but that since I got here. <laughs> I think my luck is holding up. Oh. You found me, so how unlucky can you be? Exactly. Must say, I'm starting to grow on this place. And no, not like mold. I was thinking of something else growing, but... My turn. Go ahead. See it? Sorry? The tattoo. See it? 
said it was beautiful design. Yes, you can. But it is going to involve me undressing. Skink, the crap I do for you. Yeah, that was uh, out of character. Actually, no, that was uh, that was inner <laughs> thought. That was, that was, uh, <laughs> that was in his head. <laughs> that was a uh, that was like a. You better, you better get a damn good look at this. All right, uh, uh, Egon uh, quickly retorts. Oh wait, that's the door's open. Damn it, comes. Uh, Egon quickly retorts, saying, Do I look like I mind? No, but this was a game of questions, not requests. My question but... was quite reasonable. And I said you can. But I am feeling... A little hot right now. Lean back in the chair. I don't Are think... You? Uh, I don't think I would stop you from a little show. And he rises and begins uh, removing the vest. And I'll say, for the purposes of this, both you and Hatakai can get a good feel of this. Um, on his back... There is a drawing that actually, Egon, you might have seen. It looks like when a lightning strikes wood, it kind of like makes a like burned design on the wood as the electricity goes from top to down. Uh, I think on re in real life, uh, there is a name for these kind of like decorations uh, that I forgot about it right now. Um, I've seen. I've seen it. It's you can actually you can actually take two uh, electrical wires and go, put them on each one end of a, a log, and then mm -hmm. they'll actually burn like a lightning shape. Yeah, exactly. Uh, each other, which is very cool looking. Uh, so yeah, he, something like that, right? Yeah, something like that. It is very uh, scraggly. That's kind of like very uneven line. But as you go down, as you begin to look down, you can see that it covers from like the neck, its whole back, and then the neck again on the other side. And you begin to see it is not just a birthmark, it is a full on map. You can see the little coasts and details, and you rem the reason why you identify this as a map is because you have seen this before. When Tahetakai was guiding you, he had the uh, he had a map that was uh, that was taken from someone. Don't really recall who, but there was a map that led you to the location where the colony was supposed to be built. The drawing for coast and the little islands are all perfectly drawn on his back. Uh, Tehetekai is gonna kind of, like, raise himself up into the window frame, uh, so that Egon can see him. Uh, I am going to say Egon is probably, uh, no test necessary. Egon, you see <laughs> face totally touching the window, the kind of, like, glass on the window. You see the face of Tehetekai. They have the guy blasted on it. Please tell me he does this at the exact moment that uh, Lusty Jim is pulling his shirt over his head. Yeah, I mean, he's, uh, he's, he's being yeah. stealthy about it. And, like, once you okay. make eye contact with him, he pulls back away from the window. Oh, boy. This is, uh... This is not going to be great. In in inner thought, I was having such a lovely night. All right, so, uh, uh, Lusty Jim finishes uh, showing off. Uh, does he put his uh, shirt back on, or does he leave it off? 
he leaves it off. He he puts the shirt on the back of the chair and then goes back to sit. All right. I know what my next question is, but it's your turn. Uh, as he goes to ask that question, Hetakai, you feel something. It's kind of like a chill on your spine that goes from the edge of your neck to the twin tails. Uh, and it immediately strikes you that there's something wrong. Uh, so my like, mm, so my sixth sense is kicking in. Yeah, that is your sixth sense kicking in. Uh, okay, he is gonna kind of pull back, make sure he's properly hidden, and he's going to quickly look around. Or anything out of place. His first concern is that he's been spotted. Uh, give me a perception check. I'll say challenging. Ugh, I'm gonna re-roll that. I'm gonna use my fortune point. All right. Oh, jeez. One. Damn. Man, eh, not great. Minus you two. Don't you don't really catch what is up. You do sense that there there's something wrong. That doesn't go away. But you don't really know what it is in this moment. Alright. Uh, he's going to remain in place now. He, he glances in on the window like every minute or so because he, he... Right now he's kind of having a crisis of he can't tell if what he's potentially sensing is coming from inside the building or outside the building but he does have his uh he does have his blowpipe armed and ready mm -hmm. you uh yeah you're kind of like feeling that there's something wrong uh and doesn't shake off the the, the kind of like the, this like chilly feeling is still in you as you're looking around, but you don't see anything that truly dispels this feeling. Okay. Uh, do you want to just stay on the ready there? Yeah, he he's going to be like functionally doing a hold action, ready to shoot. The... It happens very quickly. The... You see that... Um, Jim sits down on the on the the chair again. He looks you in the eye, and he asks you, "Why are you here in Lustre?" And as he asks that, there is a crash behind him, uh, behind you actually. Uh, and this gigantic beast crashes through the window. Not only the window, but the window frame. Like a giant chunk of the wall destroyed as it jumps towards the the floor. Falls on its four, uh, four paws and roars in your direction. When you say... When you say giant beast... It is a Croxagor. Oh dear. <clears throat> well, I... Are we fighting a Croxagor? Maybe. Alright, let me know. That is that is the option. That is one of the options, yes. Um... I have a gun ready. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> oh damn it, you're right. So I pull out my gun. <laughs> Uh, uh, did you say to roll Bird, Bird technically has a pistol. So. Uh, I'm it, just putting people in initiative here. Uh, let me check. Oh, we can roll it if we want. Doesn't make I'm a difference. Roll, but... I'm a roll my initiative. It's pretty average. Uh, just a second, guys. Foundry screwed me over. Uh, 
I had Skink and Proxigore sheets, and they have since disappeared. And they're gone. So I'm just importing them real quick. This is just like... like my hopes and dreams. Oh, you're fighting a Proxigore, so I think that's very... Uh... Nah, it's just a Proxigore. We got this. Okay. Truly, just deleted the sheets from the from from oh, uh, founders. Uh, That's uh, always fun. Just yeah, just making two quick two sheets real quick. Uh -huh. Foundry hates me sometimes. It's very useful, but it it does hate me sometimes. Uh, so for the purposes of of this combat and because of the uh six sense avoids you from being surprised right that okay um uh yeah i i believe i have to pass a check could you check that for me yes could you pass that check for me uh let's see okay i have to make a intuition check okay so Man, I, I will mind. roll that. I passed. Hey. So I am not surprised. Oh. Pink. Then quick one. Where where are you, Croxcore buddy? Croxcore doesn't have a shit. Oh, it does. I was about to go crazy if it didn't have a sheet. Buddy. Ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba. I was kind of curious to see if you guys were going to stay during the night. Oh, oh yeah, we wanted to fight the money. We also wanted to fight the Carpsigor. It, it, very fair. Very fair. I do find and it everyone amusing. knows Croxigores don't like sex. It scares them. <laughs> they they mm. bur burst in. Abstinence is the only option. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kids fornicating? Jumps in, into the window. <laughs> Proceed to start ripping teenagers in half. <laughs> <laughs> What are those filthy swimming pools doing in your yard? Don't have an image for poor Puritanical but... lizardmen are the worst kind of lizardmen. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> yeah. Can't uh, can't say I don't agree. All right. So actually, as that happened, Tehetaka, you're gonna go first. Um. This is not made to be a very in-depth combat. We're gonna just do theater of the mind, because uh, yeah, I think I think it's a very clear situation. So, uh, uh, Tatakai, the yeah. Croxigor jumps into the window, and you see from the hole there are six skinks, including the priest in the in the other um, the roof next to it. All right, they are on the other side to you. Uh, Tetakai is going to, uh, hmm, I'm trying to die. I'm trying to decide if it would be better to try and deal with the Croxgore or better to try and deal with them. The Croxgore. Because <laughs> I did see how they calmed him down. 
but no, I need that. I need that bell staff. Um, <clears throat> Tehetekai is going to like. Um, can I make an athletics check, or or if my movement's good enough, I would happily not have to roll if I don't have to. Uh, am I able to like leap over to the the roof there on? Um, you would be able to, but that's going to be your whole action. Uh, can I talk to them as a free action? You can, yeah. Okay, then he will do that. He's going to leap over to where they are and say, No! Call off! Cannot be uh, killed! Too important! He's, he's speaking in uh, Saurian. Uh, the uh, the other one in the other side, he kind of hit uh, the, the different skin kind of hits at you. And the one with the staff says, No one killed if get out of the way. It uh, is the plan. Um, <laughs> uh, feel free to cut me off when it's been too long, but, uh, he, he, uh, he will, um, his, ba his crest is going to flare up and he'll hiss at the priest, uh, um, no plan. Crocs are gonna too risky. Call back. Uh, I am going to say that you can make a charm roll. Yeah, great. You did you got this. invoke uh, the old one's name, which is like uh, not the old one, but like. The 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 slan's name that yeah. is reasonable. That does give them pause, but at this moment, that will only allow you to make the roll. It is going to be a challenging one. Ooh. If you make more good arguments, I am going to allow this to be easier and easier. Okay, I, I got you. I got you. Just because like they have they have their orders, and oh, you're so telling close. them to contradict those, so it's kind of hard. I don't suppose it's against... It's a versus check, is it? <laughs> mm. Oh. Oh, bite. Let's see. Let's see. No, so, like, they're the cold-blooded. Can... You know they won't fail. <laughs> they, they might. I'll do a... Mm, I'll do a cool check as a <laughs> general... They can they can reverse the numbers if they fail because cold blooded. So this won't. <laughs> oh, we <laughs> lost we lost the GM. We did. He's back. Hello. Hello. Hey. Oh, they they can reverse <laughs> it. So because they are cold blooded, if the reverse would make it a pass, then they. If the reverse is a pass because it is uh, it, it would be a thirty six. No. Uh, okay. He looks towards you and he doesn't order anything. And you see that the other uh, the other skinks, they have javelins. They're kind of like waiting on a command. But the priest just looks at you and says, He sent both of us. He cannot be contradiction. Oh, he's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> And he just kind of stares at you, well, trying clearly, to figure that this, out. He, clearly, this asshole's a ha hatchling. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I will pass my turn. Yeah. So the skinks are going to hold as they don't know what's happening. You were very convincing, although even though you failed, so they're just going to hold and let the Croxicor do his work. Ashley. You hear uh, Ashling and Berard, because you do act mm. in sequence to each other, you hear a very, very large crash from upstairs. It is very noticeable, like a car hitting a wall. Oh no, that sounds exactly like an automobile hitting a wall. I don't even know what that is. I'm going to come running out. <laughs> uh, jokes okay. aside, she's going to hear it. I think immediately that um, Manfred is in danger, 
and go running towards him. As you go to the door, because uh, you hear it upstairs, you go towards the, the, the circling door, you try to open the door, and the door is closed. Okay, time to locked. use this skill that I'm so good at. Are you ready for this? I'm going to try to kick it open. Oh, gee. Oh, okay. Bold. You have bold, yeah. I can I can attack mm. inanimate objects. They're not people. <laughs> you are not wrong. Do you? I am going Is to that... give a counterpoint. Do you wish to use the crowbar? I don't have it. I uh, I have it. Oh well, you're fucked then. Uh, yeah, go for weapon skill then for. Wouldn't it be strength? Uh, you really want to? I'm wanna... not trying to like flip the door. I'm trying to just bash it. If you want to roll lower, that's your call. Yeah, I'm not gonna roll. Wait, actually, my strength is higher. Your strength is no, twenty four against twenty nine. All right. All right, Ashling, as you go over to kick it, Brard arrives Hang holding on. his axe. Hang on. I'm going to use a fate point to make that a success. Right. It is a success, but it is not enough. The door I is a, use a second FT one. Door. All right. Can I use two? Uh, I don't think there's anything that says you can. It's an interpretation of what an, A-N means. If it means only one, or just you can keep doing it over and over again. It'll vary by, by table. You can... You can dump your fortune points on that if you want to. Yeah, I'll dump another one. I'm down to a okay. single one. Okay. Uh, blam. You blam outside uh, into the door, and you see this large, lizardy, scaly creature. Um, there's a ridge <laughs> of spikes on its back that goes up to the tail, uh, that are like golden, like orangey golden. And its head has like a ridge, and the uh, the maw around the many teeth are scarlet red. All right, I am gonna shout at it. Get away from him! Uh, ooh, what am I gonna say? I want to insult the lizard. How do I insult the lizard? If it makes you feel Ugly better, tonguey. I don't. I don't think it understands what you're gonna say anyway. That's the best part. I'm gonna say, get away from him, you bitch. <laughs> Just. Stand there menacingly with my stick. <laughs> I'm gonna say, out of principle, you can make a hard uh, charm check. I got this. Or intimidate. Okay. It would be intimidate, actually. Oh boy. Come on. Roll a one. No. Oh, yeah, it just straight up doesn't look at you. Uh, I don't know what to do. That's oh, going to be... Here. That's my yeah. turn. That's going to be Berard now. Uh, Berard will take out his sling, <clears throat> prepare a lead shot, and he will shout for Manfred to get away from the beast. And he's going to hold his action and throw it only if it goes after Manfred. Mm hmm. Um. Egon. You yep. are surprised. Yep, pretty much. So, unfortunately, you don't get you don't get actions or movement for this time. Nope. I will allow you to do a free action if you want to. If you want to say something or something like that. Ah. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Lusty Jim is also surprised. He doesn't get an action. And now it's going to be the Croxagore. The Croxagore lunges in the direction of Lusty Jim. He picks him up by the, and he tries picking him up by the neck. So it's going to be... I'm just going to roll a re like, real quick contested roll between them. Wow. Just 
Let's see if it rolls. Okay. Lusty Jim, out of pure panic, uh, falls down, like falls back to on the chair into the ground. And by sheer luck, the Croxigar's paw goes like upwards and misses him. Oh, crud. Uh, the Croxigar did roll 96. So what can you do? It's gonna be Tehetakai. Okay, I don't have the time to deal with this hatchling. Um, the, the priest is talking, uh, the priest is just ahead of me, right? Yeah. Uh, I want to run forward and, uh, I want to try and take his staff with the bells on it from him. Okay. Uh, so I guess it's a charge grapple or maybe just like a charge to try and like snatch it from his hand and hopefully catch him off guard. I'm gonna say like a charged grapple is a good is a good thing. Okay, so it's just gonna be an opposed strength test, and you can count as uh, the plus ten from charging. Haha, that means I get berserk charge. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, okay, um, but if it's that, that means I do not get my melee basic. I only have regular melee. Uh, you need to beat a, a minus four. Okay. Uh, so I get a plus ten for charging, and then I also get plus one success level for berserk charge. Ah ha 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 ha! Ah. You very quickly lunge forward and pick it, uh, pick, picks it from his uh, his hands. It kind of like slips from from it, and he hisses at you. But he's trying to catch himself as he almost falls from the roof that he's on. Uh, can I, since I'm already like running and charging, can I try and leap into the hole the Croc score made, or is that too much for one turn? I'm going to say you can try, but it is going to be a it is going to be a hard turn because you are jumping from one slippery rooftop into a hole that is like a couple of feet away. Ooh, so hard so athletics. It is going to be hard athletics. I was going to I'll say yeah, hard athletics, yeah. Come on. If you fail by 3 or more, you fall. I I didn't fall. Okay. <laughs> You didn't. You don't fall. You kind of like catch yourself on the other side of it, so you still kind of had to climb uh, up. So it's gonna be like your movement to climb up, but you don't fully fall on the on the ground. Okay. Uh, as he's passing by, as he's like gonna, as he's ripping the staff away, he'll just say to uh, st still speaking sorry, and he'll say to the priest as he's like in his face, the enigmatic one, Sentetikai. You will not stop. Um, right. As you do that, the the skink kind of like flares up in an orangey red, and he says, "You are a fool. You are interfering with plan. Strike him down." And the uh, skinks around him start throwing javelins. Yeah. Cool. Why are the skinks fighting? Uh, the guy did steal them, steal something from them. Oh, oh boy. I, as a player, I'm confused why this fight started. The it's skink drama. D don't worry yeah, about it. <laughs> All right. It's it's cold blood drama. No need to get involved. Seemed pretty hot blooded to me. Ah, I'm just gonna make I'm gonna make two attacks. Uh, it's gonna be. Are they at uh, point blank or are they further back? A uh, short range. Okay, so I will not be able to dodge. Mm -hmm. Gonna be. So also, what I'm doing, just like I'm doing, just straight up rolls and. Uh, Haha, -ha, nerds! <laughs> None of them hit. The great plan uh, favors me. 
uh, you you feel some javelins like hitting the the wall and some of them clinking away, but some of them lodging against the wall, but none of them hit you. Um, all right, that was the that was the skinks. Um, Ashley. Yes. What do you wish to do? Well, there's nothing really I can do because you know pacifist and junk. <clears throat> you you have a cool blessing. Um I have an idea though. Oh no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Go for it. Okay, so there's this cool scene in Jurassic World. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I was expecting. With you. I was expecting her to say she's going to try and pull the How You Train Your Dragon trick, but carry on. <laughs> Almost the same trick. I mean, kind of the same thing, though. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Yeah, I kind of got nothing because this is a pacifist. So I will. Hmm. None of my skills or anything are good for this. I mean, you have the blessing of protection. Oh yeah, I could do that. How do I do that on here? Uh, how yeah, how do you do blessings and foundations? There should be a religion tab on your character sheet if the blessings have been put on your character. I will do the blessing of protection. You can do a. I will cast it on my buddy. The which of your or your lizard friend? Which of your buddies? Uh, one of them that won't die. Pr- uh, Manfred. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm. I think I'm okay. <laughs> Doesn't. Oh, that's fancy. Um, oh, you can target me and one other individual. I will target you and lizard. Me. The the friendly. So lizard. I will click apply. Uh, let me check for... Oh, that's geez. apply to tokens. Yeah, I'll just do it. No problem. Okay. And uh, then I'm going to start backing up because that thing is dangerous. Yeah. Uh, I think I have to target and then apply. It. Go. Oh. Hey, nice. Uh, all right. Yeah, you back up. And now it is Berard. Um... Is Manfred engaged with the lizard? And Manfred does not count as engaged. No. Uh, Brard's gonna run up to Manfred, grab him, and try to drag him out. Okay. Uh, does does Manfred resist? As soon as it looks like we're about to get past uh, Ashling, he resists. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're able to drag him up to the door, or like the, the, the start of the staircase, and then uh, he, he starts struggling. I'll leave it up to you if you both do like a challenging, uh, an opposed strength test, test for like grappling, or if you stop. Uh, Berard will stop. Okay. Yeah, I'll say for, for the sake of this, Egon, you are dragged up to the stair, so allow... Ashling, Berard, and Egon, you all, all three of you are like right beside each other. What is going on? I don't know, but I don't think those lizards are friendly. I've already used my free action speak, so I can't. <laughs> you can uh, you can answer, no problem. Oh. Not that stingy. I don't know. Ah, <laughs> that was useful. Uh, Egon, it's your turn. All right, uh, I am going to stand in front. Uh, so I maneuver myself out of uh, Berard's grip, so that I am standing in front of both of them, and uh, I take a defensive stance. Or weapon skill while pointing my machete at the Croxagor, trying to put it between me, uh, put, put the machete between myself and the giant lizard monster. Are we. Do we have to roll, like, cool tests or something? 
Uh, oh yeah, I imagine the Crocs. Cost, yeah, Crocs guard should cause fear. I think. Crocs guard does not have fear. No, no, I no, size no, size size. when it comes like size at size. us threateningly. Uh, oh. I am going to say just because we're doing just a scene. This is not a full mechanical combat. I don't know, the, I effects, might the effects of fear and terror and things like that will get in the way of like role playing. So I'll leave it up to you. It is a very scary creature. That should be sufficient for like what actions you're going to take. But in mechanic size, that doesn't matter right now. Cool. So you yeah. take a defensive uh, position uh, on the on the door in front of Ashling and Berard. Mm-hmm. Cool. And that's me. And I say uh, for my free action speak, stay behind me. Uh, Ashling, that moss. <laughs> Y'all dissed me for taking that moss. Lusty Jim, he ducks under the table and books it. Uh, he is not able to run, so he's going to be uh, he's going to be mauled by the Croxigor as he tries to escape. Oh boy! Bye, Lusty Jim. There's not no one yet. Ah, uh, wait. Cigar has uh, weirdly low stats. Wait, did you use the book stat? Uh, oh, I clicked the wrong thing. It should be twenty. It should be forty-five. Because it's supposed to be strength, not melee. Because he's going to try keep grabbing Lusty Jump. Yeah. Well, uh, as. Jump. As Lusty Jim tries to escape, the Croxigor fully grabs Bean by the back of the neck with this like large, scaly uh, claw and pushes him back close to his chest. And as he rises, the Croxigor fully breaks the ceiling just by rising to its full length, to its full size. And there is rainwater that starts dripping inside as the, the ceiling breaks. And as it is the Croxigor's turn next, he does like a croaking sound and looks to the side as the skinks are on the other side. He takes a leap, like a running leap, and jumps to the other roof. And as he jumps, he fully crashes into the other side of the, the other building's roof and just falls straight down. So you see he, he takes a, uh, like a running leap jumps and falls on the neighboring rooftop and just like keeps crashing. I'm sure he's fine. <laughs> uh, he might be. Lusty Jim. That's a question. But yeah, you see the Croxigar fully runs away from the from the engagement. He go, goes back to the skinks. Okay. Uh, Tehetekai is going to pull himself up into the uh, the hole that the Croxigar made. Uh, and he's gonna look back at the other skinks, and his his crest is gonna be flared all the way up, and his tail is like thrashing. Um, but he's going to heft the um, the bell staff, and he's going to throw it like a javelin uh, back to where the other skinks are. He's not going to be aiming for them in particular; like he's not gonna be trying to like peg the. Um, the priest in the head, even if he deserves it, he's just gonna throw it so it lands as close to them as it can, and he's going to he's going to call out Sorian. You have now go take back to Hexwaddle. Uh, the skink kind of flares up, but he picks up the staff and doesn't say anything back to you. He just croaks something, uh, uh kind of like a low croaky and uh, jumps to the hole, and uh, all of the before, skinks before he jump does, around. Before he does, Tehetekai will say, um, Tell priest, Tehetekai has returned to Lustria. He does not seem to, to answer to that. Just yeah. Well, yeah, well, I'm sure he's going to complain about me to someone, so mission accomplished. It's gonna be a. It's gonna, gonna be, be a HR. formal complaint. Yeah, it's gonna be a formal complaint about this. Uh, Tantica is going to turn to the warm bloods and say, "Should not stay. Warm bloods will be a 
upset. Upset. Uh, on yeah, cue, by the way, going. on cue, by the way, as you say that, there is screaming on the on the street and downstairs. Tetakai must go. And uh, Tetakai is going to flee in the opposite direction that the others went in. Uh, that the other skinks went in? Yeah, I'm going to go the other way. Okay, yep. M- and much more quietly. I'm going to, because hopefully people will be drawn to that little crashing uh, obnoxious party with no subtlety uh, I'm gonna go the other way uh, yeah the you see that the the as the croxigore kind of falls uh, through the, the roof and the other skins kind of follow him uh, the croxigore is uh, an unstoppable force so he's just walking straight into the jungle uh, and he doesn't seem to care much if there's something or someone in the way it's just like bats them to the side, but it is a Croxagor batting to the side. So, there are people and buildings that are rupturing into chaos, and eventually, as everything with destruction, eventually some fire catches, and uh, people are in a little bit of a panic. No one knows what's happening. You start hearing bells of, like, attack and danger, people running from one side to the other. Um... I'll say this, Tahetakai, are you trying to stay hidden from the Wormbloods? Yes, I do not want to be tracked by a by a, an angry mob into the jungle. That is a valid concern, which was because that was exactly what I was going to say. Uh, make a stealth check as you're going the opposite direction, but like as you strike to stay hidden, because now people are in full alert for Lizardmen. Uh, and while you do that test, I'm gonna does say the, for... Does the darkness and rain make it any easier for me to hide, or is I'll it... Say it? I'll say average. Come on. Ooh. Uh, yeah, you're able to slip into the darkness and start going. Uh, while you do that, actually, um, Ashling, Berard, Ian Golan, what are you doing? Because the Hetakai doesn't seem to have explained anything, he just booked it. Uh, so does anyone know what that was about? Um, he had secrets, is what Tehetekai said, but, um, there was a giant lizard here. Brad will yeah, look that's... down the stairs. Are people coming up to the crashing sound and roaring monster noise? No, there's a bunch of naked people running to the streets, carrying their ho- their clothes in, like, bundles. Because well, I heard I think, it crashes, and then they, they're trying to run away. I think there's not really a safe place in this town tonight. Are you okay, Manfred? Manfred is slightly shocked, since he got a front row seat for the whole thing. His heart is racing. Uh, racing, I should say. You can uh, you can see that he's still holding up uh, his machete in the direction that the Crocs could jump. Ah, I know what to do. This is something I learned. Well, I think it'll work. I Brad puts his hand on Manfred's shoulder, shakes him lightly, and says, "Manfred, Losty Jim is gone, huh? and he's left his money behind." <laughs> Immediately oh snaps out of it. <laughs> Brad will beam with pride at Ashling. Yeah. Rogues and scoundrels all. <laughs> Did Lusty Jim leave his money behind? He didn't leave anything behind. It was taken. So, I mean, well, he <laughs> was everything like, is uh, here. He was. He, he was undressing. Did he, he was... happen to undress his coin purse while he was at it? He does not wear... He did not wear any purse on him. Uh... So it's here somewhere. So it is <laughs> here somewhere. Something that I will say, uh, again, you can take this as anything, but uh, as the crashes and the noises are happening, there is a moving guard of people, of like the 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 
as much as a guard that Port Weaver can have that is starting to investigate the noises, and this was the primary site. So none of you have any doubts that very soon there's going to be people climbing here. Better make it quick. So All right. you don't have a lot of time. If you want to look, you can look, but just be warned, it is a ticking clock. All right. Challenging, I take it? Uh, what do you want to do, actually? I want to... Well, now that... Uh... Uh, now that uh, Egon has been uh, pulled out of his uh, shock, he is actually thinking like uh, he, his uh, his natural instincts kick in, and he's he, and he's going to immediately look around. Uh, what's the most valuable thing? Uh, valuable smallest thing that I can snag in the shortest amount of time. Uh, yeah. Give me. I'll say for this, actually, an evaluate might be might be a good one. You know what? I'll take it. As you're doing that, Ashling and Berard, what are you doing? Ah, oh, god damn it! I Berard will stupid seventy. Hang on, I got an Bro, idea. Bro, you are. I will. Seventies love will, you. Apparently, I, will see I mean. Bernard doing this, and or not Bernard. Uh, I will see Manfred doing this, and I will help him. Is it? Uh, it's challenging, right? Uh, yeah, it is challenging. Challenging for me. God damn it. Okay. Um, Ashling, as you're looking for, Egon, I think you you said that you were looking for the thing that is like precious, but you can take with you. Is that what you said? It's saying? like, what's the like? Instead of taking like, ooh, this grandfather clock that it could fetch a nice nice price. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to like loot that. And get get out with it without no answering questions. But yes, yeah, something small that can be pocketed real quick, or like a coin purse. Ironically, uh, uh, with a plus one, I will say there is one thing that you recognize from this room that you could take with you that you know is worth money, which is the mirror you sold him. Ah, yoink. It is on the uh, on one of the like uh, he he put on one of the, the tables. So as you're kind of looking, you recognize it, and you're like, "Oh, actually, you're looking frantically." Ashley, you recognize the thing. You're like, "Oh, I remember Egon saying he he sold this for money. Like I was there." So you quickly pick it up. Uh... I will look at Manfred and just say, "Manfred, here," and then I will say, "We need to leave now." Good idea, let's go. He snatches the mirror, uh, puts it in his sling bag. Let's go. Berard, what you doing? Berard is heading downstairs, and if the guards are coming up uh, before Ashling and Manfred have started their way down, uh, he'll distract them with a conversation about hearing a giant scream and there was a freaking lizard upstairs. You're gonna do kind of like a hysteria vibe yes. to distract Gotcha. Uh, do a perception check to see if you see any, uh, any other people. Uh, challenging average? I'm gonna say challenging because of chaos. No. Oh. 70s, man. They love us. I'll, I'll use my fortune point. Poor boy. There we go. Only a little you... bit of failure now. Um, you... Don't really see any anyone potentially dangerous right now, but you are on the lookout. So I'll ask you to do any more tests if Egon and uh, Ashley don't go straight down. But as of now, the bar is clear. Uh, so Egon and Ashley, what are you doing? Uh, I think it's time that we leave. Leaving immediately. Okay. Uh, you guys run downstairs. You find Berard at the at the ground floor. The bar has been emptied as everyone kind of like ran back to the streets to go back to whatever rooms they had or houses they had. Um, and you start hearing the kind of like this metal to stone sound of armored militia walking the walking the streets. Um, Was that as... a back door? Are you asking the GM or us? I'm asking Manfred. Uh, does Manfred know of a back door? I'll leave it to you. 
I'm going to say yes, because a brothel, always has a, a brothel always has a back door. Cool. Uh, didn't, yeah, there is, a, there is a back door. Hold on. <laughs> Nailed it. Ah, uh, did you have a soundboard? Great, great. Now, now this video is going to be oh. demonetized. Great. No. Um, <laughs> wait, did you have, what? Did you have a That's... soundboard ready of, like, uh, this whole time? Uh, editor's note, cut it's... that out. It's a it's a dis, it's a Discord feature. <laughs> we're not we're not gonna oh. get in trouble for a rim shot. <laughs> God damn it! That was that was that yeah, was yeah, very yeah. scary because it was very loud. <laughs> I didn't well, know what was happening. What the fuck? Oh, trust me, I I inflict my own pain in uh, Alexis' yeah. Discord server by letting people uh, tell me what to put on the soundboard. Horrible. <laughs> uh... I know it's great. All right, yeah, uh, yes, uh, Manfred, no, uh, well, sorry, Egon knows of a backdoor to the brothel, and yes, he immediately rushes for it, okay. saying, this way, with me. Okay. Uh, you rush to the back door, and as you get outside, you start noticing that it is not just like, oh, there's a loud sound and there's mm -hmm. militia. There's a large sound, there's chaos, there's anarchy, there's militia. Because very quickly, people start raiding shit uh, left and right. It is a pirate town uh, at its core. So you see a lot of people running around in some fire, starting at some screaming uh, as you're going to the back alleys. Um, where are you headed? We are going to... Well, the only thing that Egon can think of right now is the that meeting place where we, where we saw... Where we last saw Te Twin Tail outside of town. Well, sort of close ish down. To the north? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we uh, we move as we can. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we exit sharpish. You run through the back door. Um... You start going through the back alleys, kind of like avoiding the worst of danger. Um, I am going to ask for all of you to make me a stealth check. If any of you have stealth urban, that would be applicable. But otherwise, just a stealth check. All is in the three of them, or all is in all four of us? Uh, all three of you. You already wrote the head. Okay, cool, cool, cool. My apologies. Yeah, that, you're correct. I got this. Check it. Nope. Oh, yeah, Nicely done, Ashley. Yeah. This is yeah. challenging, despite the chaos. Yeah. Okay. Well, well what were you worried about? Because <laughs> the chaos, like the chaos, is both helping you, because it is making you able to be stealthy, but also it's hindering you because with the chaos, a lot of people are running to back alleys, so you are running alongside people and across people, so it's kind of like, because of the chaos, people are looking to places where they wouldn't look. Uh, but it is still able... Okay. Um, don't count two of them. Two of you were successful. Just, uh, you start running and you start going north where the, uh, where you set the location with Tatakai earlier. Um, as you start avoiding people, you do start hearing, um, combat and things like that. Uh, to Hetsakai, you quickly, because of your your natural affinity to this, you very quickly escape from the Port River itself. Uh, where do you head? As you kind of like just jump into the jungle. To Hetsakai? Sorry, say, repeat that. I got, I got distracted by my dog for a moment. No problem. Uh, as you are running on the opposite direction that the other lizardmen went, uh, you start running across the city, and you eventually break from the city into the jungle. Uh, so you are able to escape Port Weaver and with, um, without being noticed by Anthony. Excellent. Uh, what once do you I am, do? once I'm comfortable that I am not being pursued. I will uh, basically um, head to like a, like 
climb a tree, find find a a higher vantage point, and keep an eye out for the warm bloods that I want to see. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll say that you guys are able to find each other after a while because you do remember the kind of like the meeting place, and you do see people running in that direction. Uh, you had night vision, right? I, I do, hate yes. For some reason. Okay. I don't. Uh, does Berard have night vision? Berard does not have night vision. Okay, so Ashling. He, no. has, a, he Ash has a priest of Shalia. Ashling does, and Tehetekai does. Okay. So, uh, with Ashling kind of guiding you through the back alleys and Tehetekai being able to spot, you are able to find each other in the mass. And as you break the 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 city into the jungle, um, you kind of find each other, and uh, all of you unscathed, which is very impressive. <laughs> Tetekai will drop down out of the tree um, oh. next to them, and uh, more lizards. He'll he'll kind of sheepishly say, "That did not go right." No. Uh, I thought they were your friends. Young hatchling. Arrogant. Did not uh, listen. Yeah. Too rushed. He had a rather what? big friend, though. What was the big thing? He's Croxigor. Oh, so we're making up words now. Okay. Just make Was sure. that a beastman? Because like Ungor Bestigor Croxigor. Not beast. Made by old ones. Serve purpose. Large, yes. Usually not so dangerous. What's the weather still? Raining. Why, why do you have to risk it? I, I had to check because it's dark and we're outside and we really could, you know, really can't afford to be it out in the, this time of day. Find shelter. Move tomorrow. Spent good money on that room. I'll say something important as you guys are on the edge of town. Um, either I mean, Ingvar, people... Ingvar and Egolf are not with you. Uh, yeah. Because with the chaos, none of you really looked for them. They were drinking downstairs. Well, I didn't see them downstairs either. <laughs> Tatakai counts one, two, three warm bloods and we'll... Uh... Say, leave now or wait? Leave now. You leave. <clears throat> uh, I don't know if I have money to survive. Jingles coin purse. <laughs> don't worry. I got that covered. <laughs> I meant that don't they know we're supposed to meet up in the north? Meet and They were... Yes? No, I mean north of town. They were there when we set up the meeting spot, shouldn't they? We wait long enough for them to get here. How wait? By standing still? Does uh, wait mean something different to stand still. <laughs> He shakes his head and say, Time! Time wait. And he's going to point up at the uh, the moon. Okay. Time wait. Uh, Rod will nod as if this makes sense. He'll point at where the moon is, and then he's going to point further along its trajectory and say, "Clunkla's eye. Reach here. We leave." 
Gerard will nod and then start muttering to himself, Tlaunt Claw's eye. That's the moon, then. Juan! Juan more? Juan is... moon. Look, the loneliest number. <laughs> okay. Juan! <laughs> uh... As that is decided, we are getting close to the end of the game, so I am going to ask for two luck rolls. How, how do I'll we do roll it. a luck roll? Is it, uh, is it, is I it, have a fortune, is it, and I just spend it for one of them to succeed, <laughs> as this is luck. Honestly, yeah, I would accept it. What a, what, a, what, a, what a cheeky response. It's funny. If I, anyone I has... spend my fortune. So, who do you want to find you? Ingvar. Ingvar, okay. Uh, does anyone else want to spend uh, resources to, to make all, them be found? I, or... am, I am all out. So, you're out as well. Same. Wait, wait, didn't you have one left? Oh, then I'll use it. Oh, yeah, I think I, I, no, I think Ashling did have one remaining. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, great idea, Bird. Uh, Ben, sorry. Not your, not your character. Your character didn't have the idea you had. Um, yeah, so by scraping the bottom of the barrel of luck on this very unlucky situation, uh, your companions do remember the instructions of, like, this meeting site, which was on the north. And after around 30 minutes to an hour, they arrive soaked in uh, rain and a little, a little wounded. Both of them did suffer some wounds from from fighting. Uh, both of them do arrive in the meeting spot, and they, as they arrive, you all all ass into the jungle, in the direction of the Sea of Skaggy. Nice. And that's where we will end today's session. Hey. Excellent. Woo. Well done, everyone. We did it. That was fun. We uh, <laughs> we didn't get any closer to Skeggy, but we did get some interesting things done, so that's good. That's not true. We made it out of Port Reaver. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, you're right. We, we made it about, we, we got like 50 yards closer. <laughs> hey. No, no, a half hour-ish. Yeah. Step, steps are steps. Got to get them in somehow. Like you can't, Hell you can't yeah. knock the hustle. You know. I got my second. <laughs> I got my second talent. Gotta. I got my second talent point and detect artifact. Gotta, gotta stay on that Sigmar grind set. Uh, for those that were asking, uh, what was your stream? Uh, I am using as a basis the the official art for the Croxigar, which are in the book. So this is the corpse. You it, it's, should it's, be it's... using Blood Bowl 2. <laughs> I it's... didn't ask, so I'm not using. <laughs> it's it's funny to me that the um uh the I don't know why, but the the red the red faced Croxagore is like for some reason just the default now. I don't know why, but it shows up everywhere. Uh, like it shows up in the the Seraphon book, it showed up in the Stars and Scales, it showed up in Lustria. And it's like that's not what they all look like. That's actually like a very specific spawning, but they just keep using him always. I, I just... didn't, I didn't find any reference to like a red faced Coxigore being special. I, I didn't find it because I found a lot of info about like so, uh, about like uh, Croxigors and uh, Saurus having like different colors and stuff and yeah like it would, i found like white but like the reddish the i didn't see anything it wouldn't that. be it wouldn't be hugely crazy and um, there'd be a fair number of them but the red the red scales would denote that it's a sotex spawning but that's not unusual and would also explain why it was so aggressive yeah i also like the angry toucan <laughs> I, yeah. I am a lover of the angry toucan yes and if, if if you ever fight a Kruxigor, if, if either like if they fight beside you or against you, they will have the giant pillar. Because I using a pillar as a weapon is always 
amazing to me. So cross scores are master yeah. of the arts of I will use whatever I happen to be holding at the time because reasons. Oh no, poor yeah. lusty Jim. <laughs> it turns it <laughs> meat flail. Oh no. Yeah, I am very curious to the conclusions you guys got from the conversation about like what was the deal with Lusty Jim? Uh, uh like what was, what was their objective? So, I'm just I'm just curious but you the, know, I mean, he, there, he, he had hopes and dreams, but now he doesn't. There, There's a good chance Hetakai will eventually have to swing by Hexwaddle, and maybe I'll find out what happened to him. Yeah. Well, we do know that he's interacted with Lizardman before. Or I, I, as a player, would, because he mentioned, like, oh, yes, the ones who murder everyone they see and come to raid our town. I feel like if you live in any of the colonies, you've probably bumped into them. Yeah. If, you, if you've been there long yeah. enough. Yeah. And I imagine it's very rarely a pleasant experience. But anyway, uh, that's it for today's session. Thank you all for joining. Thank you, everyone in chat. We really appreciate y'all coming down um, and uh, observing and hanging out and stuff and chatting. So I'm going to go ahead and shut off the recording here.